five seconds. I think we are live in very short time. Done redirecting. I think we are good to go. Let me verify first on the Here we go. Um, DC Libertarian Party is live now. Okay, here we are. Just We're live. On. We're live. Former leader, you guys last leader. Yeah, well, welcome to our viewers. I, I can't see Facebook right now, so I don't know if there's zero of you there or, or 100 or five. But welcome tonight to the BC Libertarian Party coverage of the federal election results 2021. Uh, we got a, a great crew tonight with me on my right. Sandra, the uh, vice president of the uh, of the party. Alex, Alex is the president of the uh, Surrey EDA or the the uh, Delta Surrey Langley Delta Surrey Langley Constituency Association. And then on Zoom, we have current uh, well the new party leader. He's not not so new anymore, but <laughs> party leader uh, Keith McIntyre and uh, Andrew Co Andrew Coombs joining us as well. And Andrew is the um remind me andrew what's your what's your role i'm president of the fraser valley constituency association All right and so thank you andrew so tonight i guess we're going to talk about the the fight uh for liberty and on the federal political stage and how that's going uh some of us are really have been really looking at the the pbc results i know uh some of us here uh are big supporters of the federal libertarians as well so we're not necessarily uh united in that in that front but we're all we're all united in hoping that liberty gets a foothold somewhere in this country um it's not looking like a slam uh, a slam dunk or a home run for for any of the liberty parties no. tonight um i i i'm here for a different reason i'm here to uh, i i think federal politics is a waste of time especially in the uh, western provinces the, oh, only, the only way that we can actually make a difference is is prevent is provincially i think that that's where we can actually do something um we're basically irrelevant in the west but that's why i'm here so a, so a, a non-voter a, a couple ppcers a couple of federal libertarian supporters um and so you know I can only be here for a short while, but I was, you know, happy to introduce the group. And you know, I I'm someone who is following the PPC closely and hoping they would do well. Um, well, they did better. They certainly did better. I think starting with the positive, they're almost guaranteed to get better than two percent. Yeah. Federally. Where um, where is he? The People's Party it's right now? Be almost certain. Yeah. And once the the reason that two percent is is important is once the party is above two percent they get a yeah. significant portion yeah. of their election expenses back and that's going to be a ton of money for the that PBC that'll to, really help to I think. keep a war chest going forward oh, i'm impressed how well they did considering the media blackout on them <laughs> yeah. you know and now they they uh they're getting more attention i was listening to the cbc on the way over here and and they were they were you know they were surprised uh, i don't think they should have been surprised this is there's there's never been a better time federally for a, a liberty-based uh party to to take hold yeah well absolutely and i i think yeah i saw on the cbc had they actually had a reporter at bernier's election event yes so we're, you're getting some info and, and feedback and you know one thing i was thinking on the drive over listening to C, the cbc's coverage was like it you don't think of it this way but that apparatus is such a huge information sharing network that all the major parties get advantage get, yeah, an they get, they get an advantage like how the different ridings are doing and what yeah. you know what um just like what different strategies are different areas are doing you, you know when you don't have any coverage of your party you it's you're cut out of that information really to a significant degree so you know just being well, able to cut hear, out of a lot yeah and financially as well which is a whole other issue i, I don't think any of that should be on the back of the taxpayer well absolutely Ooh, we have a uh, we have a comment uh, right away from from the Libertarian Party, Party of the Canada, and she says, uh, someone with a, some skin in the game, she uh, wouldn't say that Libertarian Party of Canada is irrelevant. Give them a full-time leader, which they now have, plus mm -hmm. piles of money, still work to do, and they might uh, start to make some headway. Uh, 
signature requirements are a huge obstacle. Election expense rebates based on 10% of the vote or another. I didn't realize that happened federally too. I think the campaign expense reimbursements that happen in provincial politics and for subsidies and all that stuff make it yeah, you and really I difficult. Made, uh, made comments and videos about that, Keith, but yeah, it happens on the federal level. And I, I bet you there's a lot of things on the federal level that we don't even know about. But the reality is, is somebody uh, commented, I, I, I don't know if I made this public enough, but I spoiled my ballot today. Uh, there was I nobody on the ballot for my riding who I was willing to support send to Ottawa. Uh, even there was a PPC candidate there and she did not in the campaign make herself worthwhile to earn my vote. So I wrote none of the above on it as dark as I could with a black pen. And that was the end of that. But somebody's criticism was, but don't you think voting for the PPC is beneficial because it helps them earn the tax subsidies down the, down the road? That and is I, a good point. And, and my point is like, I don't think those should exist. So why should yeah, I right. factor that into my decision? No, and if, I, I, if, I, re I resent strategic and, voting. And, and exact, thank Vote you. Vote your principles. And so we're on the same page right yeah. off the bat. Uh, early in my uh, experience with the Libertarian Party of Canada, there was a, a, a bulletin board, a chat group that was very active. It's long since become quiet and disappeared. But one of the conversations was, is like, what are we going to do when we get to this threshold and we start getting this money in? The decision was we're going to take it and we're going to bank it. We're going to use it. But the other, the other conversation was this is dirty money. This is taxpayer money. This is you know, illicit, illicitly taken from the taxpayer. Taxation is theft. We should reject it. And, no, because you and know, I was, then someone else will take. You're better off taking it, and and well, they'll take it. I promise take, you, they will. We'd right. be better off if, well, <laughs> God no. willing, we ever get into that position. Yeah, and, no, and, and, they, and, and they never came to that. Uh, yeah, the, the Libertarian Party of Canada, best they ever did. They came close to one percent. Yeah, very close. Like like it was just on the threshold. But like you said, it's I think it's two percent you yeah. need to hit, and and that's doubling it. Yeah, that's doubling we, it. We've since that time the libertarian part of canada has become so irrelevant and i hate it because i'm a member i've run uh three times as the candidate and i believe in it and i almost ran again this election uh we'll get into that if it, if we run out of time or i run out of content i should say but uh yeah, that's correct. The, the, <laughs> the reality is is that this this party the libertarian party uh has has lost its its relevance and the People's Party of Canada, who doesn't have the strict philosophical tie to the liberty movement, has taken over a lot of that momentum. And I don't yeah. think that's a bad thing. I think that that's a good thing. I'm just disappointed. You'd like to see more purist disagree. libertarian right. point party, right. yeah, right. than than than. I'm going to disagree a little bit that they that they are irrelevant. I think. I okay. like I, I see that it was a you know they weren't quite prepared for this election I think they're going to be more prepared next time but just the amount of uh, feedback and comments I got of people are like how do, how do I vote where's my candidate uh, oh if I didn't know there was, wasn't going to be a candidate I ran for the marijuana party before I would have ran this time um, I think I think the people are out there um, and you know it's tough I, I look at what we're trying to do in provincial politics and, and I, I look at the next next three years as a battle a battle to get those candidates get those that organization and prepare ourselves for the same way so it's not a it's a it's yeah. a difficult difficult thing but yeah i i, I know i would uh, love that there love if there is more than one libertarian candidate in bc i know there is a couple of personal issues that that lost some candidates but uh yeah anyways what uh what are the uh, results like right now andrew you've been keeping an eye on it oh are you frozen no oh, you're there no, I'm here. So it uh, it is almost identical to what we had before we got in. Uh, 154, 121, 30 block, 30 NDP, and two green. We just spent $600 million to do the exact same thing that we did be in the exact 30 same days place. ago. Yeah. Like, well, we don't worry, they'll just print more money. Don't worry. Just going back to the federal libertarians for a minute, they had a bit of uh, 
bit of bad timing, a bit of bad luck with the with the with the federal leader with Tim Owen yeah. stepping down after a, a monster of a of a career as the leader there, yeah, a decade or so, and just taking that party from from nothing and and getting it some really international attention. You know, he got you know got the, even American media. He certainly. You know, he was in Parliament a few times, at least you know for for other roles. But he 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 made a name for the federal party, and you know he he did a lot of work taking that party. But uh, you know it was time for time for him to step down in his in his own words, and he resigned. Of course, I'm sure he didn't know that they were about to call a federal election. Yeah, they didn't you know, consult with him. <laughs> so I'm sure that uh, you know, of course, that that didn't hurt. You know, or that didn't help. Sorry. Agreed. Uh, I think well, that would have been a difference. Known this federal election's been coming for over a year. Like I saw. Yeah, uh, I, I've been hearing from my sources the same thing. We yeah. we assumed it would be October, so here we are. It's a little bit early, but uh, we did elect a, a new party leader there at our last convention. Tim Owen gave a really rousing, outgoing speech as leader. Tim Owen, seven years, came out of nowhere, and yeah, you're right. He had charisma, put his own time and money into it and was the leader that this party needed. And we're, we're in a make or break situation as a party. I think we have about a dozen candidates countrywide of what, 338 spots? <laughs> yeah. That's, it's, that's, a, it's a down year for the party. It, so, I mean, even, year. even Rebuilding provincially, year. We, had a, we had a down year, but I mean, I think that we're still in a position where we have a lot more momentum and a lot more structure than the federal party does. Well, provincially, we still got more, we still got a record number of votes. We yeah, we did. Yeah, totally yeah. Right. Oh, I would oh, call absolutely. us having a down year, down number of candidates, but as a snap yeah. election, we still had 25 candidates. We had seven more that were ready to go. Right. And, no, I don't uh, think it was a down year. I think it was a, we, I think I left at a peak, pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> For, former leader, uh, Don Wilson. Yeah, that wasn't a down so, year. So, with, but don't call it a comeback. Andrew, you got something to say? With the, the federal libertarians, though, we've, all their momentum got stolen by the PPC, right? Um, there was the big excitement when there was rumors that Max was going to come over mm -hmm. to be one of the guys with the, the Libertarians and everything. And once that didn't happen, I just felt like that killed the sales. I think that took the sale out of Tim Mullen's, uh sales. Uh, and our the party just never really has rebounded from yeah. that, right? right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't but, know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm on, on the wrong channels, but I'm on a pretty libertarian, pretty libertarian guy. But I don't really see very much mes messaging from from the. Um, the state of the the things that are going on like i get more more the thing i do on the libertarian party of canada hey andrew maybe turn your video off you're getting a little choppy out there yeah, you're getting choppy yeah hard to keep up with you there andrew no i i think i got what andrew is trying to say so what basically that the, the ppc has, has taken definitely momentum. taken over that liberty message and that momentum uh but i think it the the best example is that neither leader is going to get elected today. Jacques Boudreau, the Libertarian Party of Canada leader, has 311 votes right now uh, in his Ontario riding to 9,000 for the Liberal candidate. Totally irrelevant. Yeah. Last place by a country mile. Uh, I've had vote totals smaller than that, bigger than that, but that's what you can expect. Uh, Max Bernier right now is not even half the vote total of his, in his own conservative riding. party yeah, in his counterpart own riding. in his own riding, in his vote, in which votes. he came very close to taking in, in, in 2019. 2019, very close. It was within a few, a, a, a thousand votes or so. I, yeah. I, correct me if I'm wrong. What do you but think right did now, him in? What do you think he did, did him in? I think it's that he went on the road and forgot about his riding and tried to really emphasize a nationwide campaign of yeah. contrarian views, yeah. which which may have helped a 
few writings across the country. Yeah, but not all but of them. Hurt his own writing. Yeah, I would have hurt his own writing, and 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 you know, and I talked about this with him. I did. I did get to okay. talk to him personally, and I said yeah. to him, you know, first of all, I'm that's a good job. You know, I, and he knows I'm a libertarian, and and you know, I said, why are you? just going after conservative votes. I mean, if you're really, really successful, you're only going to get a handful of conservative votes. Right. And I said, why are you not going after the liberal votes? And right. he wrote it down what I said. I said, you're, you are right. more conservative than the conservatives, but you're also more liberal than the liberals. And he wrote it down, but it never went that way. He's uh, not listening to me. I would have <laughs> liked to see Max. Uh, I, I feel like he didn't campaign enough in his hometown. Like, that's, I mean, no, that's, that's exactly point, what that's Alex was saying. I'm you know, an amateur, you know, whatever couch uh, yeah. commentator here. Like he did, gr I think he did great across the country. Yeah, I think he, he should have focused he a little more a on both. Federal campaign, at least secure his own. The scale right. of his party. He was he worked very hard. I mean, he was going nonstop the yeah. whole campaign. Yeah. But I I was a bit surprised he wasn't in. How's it pronounced? Boyce? Boyce. The Boyce. Boyce. It's probably Boyce. It's not Boyce. That's, 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 that's Spanish. It's French. The Boyce. Boyce. <laughs> so a lot of the stories about him as uh, when he was a member of parliament was that he spent most of his time worrying about his riding like an MP should. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that was that was both a critique and a positive of him that like his first instinct was to, to look after his riding. And now he runs and it's like he ignored his writing. Yeah. yeah but that, that's, a, that's a difficulty of being a leader. Like I, I, I look at, like he's the only leader that actually was, has been active for the last year plus and actually going out and engaging, engaging with voters. And it is, it's, it's a tough balance, I, th I think. And I kind of, I respect him for the energy that he had. And, but yeah, should he have focused on his home writing to, to win that perhaps, but or is this long a general after the war? <laughs> Yeah. Or is this long term strategy building up momentum? So I'm on some of these PPC groups, and what what I what I see is they're not look going after conservative voters or liberal mm -hmm. voters. They're going after non voters, which I Good think and, uh, there are a lot. I am surprised at the again. I shouldn't be surprised with the low voter turnout. Uh, I found too, like when I'm talking to people, even now, like for me right now, this whole this whole vaccine. I call it vaccine segregation or, you know, breaking people up by medical status, whatever, just it to me, certainly is. It's shakes also me the my core. Yeah, I, medical I, privacy. I, I mean, I'm, I'm on full alert right now. I just, I think this is just. Uh, That's also an excuse in my mind, if we're going to take this to its logical, terrible end. Well, I don't know what the end point is. If, if you know, 75% of people apparently are supportive of this, it's like, where, where are you going to go with this for people? But mm -hmm. my only point in saying that is to me, this is, you know, I'm, I'm fully alert. But I, you know, I talked to people and I would say more people than ever in my circle were interested in the election and were asking what to do, but still talking to just sort of ordinary people out, you know, near my apartment or around the workplace, still, I'm still shocked at the number of people who just, I could not, no matter how I hard sold it or soft sold it, couldn't convince them to be even interested in the political process, let alone, you know, what party I wanted them to vote yeah. for. I don't start there. I'm like, Hey, what about the election? You know, Oh, F off. Or <laughs> not, yeah. not quite like that, but like, Oh, please. You know, like yeah. I have not no time for that at all. Yeah, and these are people same. I chat, my neighbors. I'm, and I'm not very like political. So, yeah, you know, I don't. Yeah, exactly. I, so yeah. just to your point, that, that's, that surprises me too. Like right now, I, I feel like it's, you know, the, the nation, the life of our nation, it, you know, it hangs in the balance in a sense of, of, of its identity and its past and what, it, what kind of country we're going to be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I still think my, I, I haven't looked at the numbers, but my prediction, as I said, at the start of the campaign was record low voter turnout. And whether that's true or not, you know, we never get more than what 30 or five or 40% of the eligible voters out. So it's, you know, and it's a, it's oh, a it's, diminishing number. It's, too. More, it's more than that. No, it's usually uh, in the sixties. So usually the low voters? 60s the high 60s I mean, that, i'm thinking of the total population that's what, what you're thinking of i'm sure so yeah so it, it's interesting to see to be able to see the stats i don't know if it's going to be very easy to to apparently tell how many people that didn't vote before that have voted now i know those parties with the voter lists will be able to get that but just judging by some of the facebook groups that are most active around ppc the um the people that are in there that and they, they're uneducated about how the electoral process works and they're trying to learn they're trying to understand 
Um, there were some bad actors in there for sure. There was people trying to convince people to write in votes for people that weren't in their writing. Um, but people were interested. But what what is something that I think we as a provincial party really have to watch for is if we do become as relevant as the PPC, is that we are going to be attacked on vote splitting. And that's something that we need to really watch because I, I don't think the vote splitting argument actually um, is necessarily accurate for the PC, especially with how many non-voters that they were uh, bringing up. My own writing is a very, very tight race between a conservative and an NDP. The NDP has been an incumbent for six years. A conservative, I ran into her and she said she's way more libertarian than I am, but you know how libertarians like to argue about how libertarian they are. But she's running for the conservative. It's only a test and it should be pass or fail. No dirty test. No, I'm against that. (laughs) But but strategically, I should have voted for her. Like I, I barfed in my mouth even voting today at all. I actually did end up voting for PPC just just for the um i i think that independent voice and that that small party voice is the most important thing that we can do as a voter right now i think the party has some very big challenges and if they (laughs) ended up being elected it would be kind of a kind of a problem but you know um i don't really like voting i don't even like voting for myself to be honest Oh, no, don't mind that. That's the number one reason I've run on many ballots. It's just so I could vote for myself. So that's an easy vote. Who I, who I knew to vote for. Uh, but no, so, so we talk about the vote splitting. And I, and I know that a lot of the PPC supporters and the libertarian supporters, we want to squish that. We want to say that that's not a real thing. We're bringing out voters who've never voted or bringing people from other liberal and green parties. But the reality is, is that in 2017, there were some ridings that we split the difference on. Our provincial party, some small insignificant vote total of 200 votes or so, that was the difference between the liberal and the NDP candidate. So we actually made a difference. Hmm. So it's, well, it, it's, were we the difference? You're assuming though that all no of the voters ever for us would have gone for one party I'm or the other, I'm not right? assuming. Like what, my, maybe my, Courtney Comox, right? It was like a couple hundred votes. Yeah, right? and, and, and it was, this was in the East, East like in that. like mission area. I can't remember the exact writing, but yeah, it was in mission well, area. Courtney Comox on the island was yeah, yeah, super yeah, close yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. But if you took all those libertarian voters and you asked if there was no libertarian party, who would they have voted for? I mean, it's not necessarily liberal. Right. right. Like it's probably a lot of greens and non-voters. I would say greens and non-voters. I mean, like, so yeah. you're, you're, you're probably right. Liberals aren't going to get 200 votes out of that. You no, know? I couldn't agree you know, more. Maybe and, they'd get 50 yeah. or 80 or something like that. So right. you got to think about that too. No, I, 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 I want to update on a very hot race in the uh, only libertarian candidate in British Columbia. Golok has uh, double the votes of the communist candidates. So. Woo! <laughs> You know, uh, communism, kicking it to the curb. Golok, <laughs> and uh, how is Karen doing? Uh, she's also a provincial member of our party, but she's running for the PPC. How is she Karen doing? Karen Litsky. Thank yes. you. She's, she's at uh, three three point three percent of the vote right now. Very Karen liberal. and Golok, both great. I would pay money to watch Golok and the communist have a debate, just the two of them. But you know, but you know what? To Golok's defense, and of all liberty-minded people. His biggest criticism this entire campaign is how little he and the communists have been given media coverage. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, media like he, he would always say me and the commie didn't get <laughs> coverage. Like, but Karen, being a PPC member, got invited to everything. So clearly the huh. PPC has been invited to that level, that next echelon of all right. Except we'll, the national we'll, debates. We, will, we weren't we'll, there. We'll yeah, stomach your there. existence. Well, that's the thing. That's but exactly the Libertarian it. Party to, still isn't there. there. No. We have to get there is the thing. I mean, or, or we don't. Or we don't, right? I mean, we have I mean, to get there or we don't get there. Or we don't. And, actually, wow. You know, I'm now on. Actually, the. Uh, well, I was, when I ran don't. in the last I'm election. You've got to figure out how to play the game. In the PPC. Win seats. And, um, and I wasn't invited to a lot of stuff either. Well, you know what? I made a royal pain of myself and Good just, well, that's what I did. Oh my gosh. So another person I was running, uh, you know, so that was also running for VC found out where the guy that was putting together one debate likes to go drinking. So I went there and I found him. I mean, this, seriously, <laughs> I said, you got to have me at your, this is, 
this is anti-democratic and all that anyway. He didn't let me into the debate, but I did get, which was actually even better. I did get to go out there and speak. Says so you got, you awesome. have the microphone, you have three minutes, go. Okay, that's that's great. No one to <laughs> argue against me or call me names. And then a couple of people took their picture with me that's after. Great, I don't know if it great. helped, but yeah. you gotta you gotta push. So good for you. You and, gotta and, push. And I remember so 2017 uh, provincial election, Rob Probrand uh, running in the Langley riding next to me, and he showed up to an all candidates meeting and said, "Yeah, here I am." And they're like, "You're not on the list," so they mm -hmm. didn't let him speak. Ooh. And then sure enough. At the end of the meeting, as we're almost concluding, the moderator, or not the moderator, but the organizer came up to the mic and said, Rob has just popped up on the elections BC uh -huh. website. He has met the criteria too late for being here, but they handed him the mic and they gave him a platform. They said, we did what we thought was right. Mm -hmm. And now we're also going to do what we think is right. And they let him have longer than the rest of us to speak. And did I think he was the best libertarian candidate? No, but he was a contrarian and he had some really outside the box ideas, which is more than you can say for most of the, the Borg, right? The blue, orange, red, green, all these candidates to say the same things over and over. So yeah, Rob Pro, Pro, uh, Probran, Rob Probran, I think I'm saying his name right. He moved out to the uh, Saskatchewan area. <clears throat> And uh, so you won't. So be I want to. I want to ask a question about the about the debate. And so the way the way that it worked, I looked this up. So the question is going to be: Do you think um, Maxine Bernier would have done better or worse if he was in the debate? And what it was is there was a nonpartisan committee. Nonpartisan doesn't mean unbiased. It just means nonpartisan. It's probably pro-government, so it is very biased. But their criteria was they decided that only uh, leaders that had more than 4% of the popular vote in the polls when the election writ was dropped would be allowed into the debate. By the time the debate, uh, the English language debate happened, PPC was polling way higher than the Green Party, but he still wasn't allowed to go into that. Into oh, it's just it's so rich. And that's something... Yeah, that's, that's something that we run into too, right? Like Libertarian is never on the polls. Even this year, Maverick was on the polls and True North sometimes, but Libertarian never was and the party's been around a long time. So what do you guys think? Like if 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 Bernier had been allowed in that debate, do you think it would have made a difference? I'm not but, sure it made a difference in I the last one. I don't think so, <laughs> honestly. Th those debates are so, they're so framed, right? For the, the issues that are, are the, the issues are set by the, whatever you want to call it, the media establishment, the political exactly. establishment. Like, None climate of these guys are caught off guard ever. Oh, you're breaking Sorry, up there, Sorry, you're breaking Keith, up, Keith. Yeah, Did you guys so, see uh, Rosemary Barton? Her questions, I, I, come I on. Even, I can't even watch it for more than 15 minutes or something like that. It's just I, so, I had so many eye rolls. Uh, yeah. I, can, I mean, I see this artificial or, or artifice or at least just so foreign to me. And, and none of the issues that are important to me are even spoken about. You well, know, I, I would like, I would go not... further to say, Don, that I think a lot of the issues that are important to Canadians are not discussed. They're just the issues that they could throw platitudes at. And this is important because we're good. And it's just, I don't think most Canadians really genuinely care about these things. And they, they think they're supposed to, but I think your average Canadian is really worried about their own, their own pocket for one and, and, not their own liberty. It seems their own safety more than their liberty, well, as so, we've discovered. So, so to that point, I can speak to the debates and that point at the same time. I uh, talked to an 18-year-old employee I have uh, yesterday, trying to explain to him how the Bank of Canada is the the source of all the problems and how they are they are defrauding people of their purchasing power. Mm -hmm. and, and, and did he get like, it? And, and he's like, wow, like, I don't even have to go to my, my grade 12 marketing class. I'm like, this is a marketing kid. This is economics. <laughs> but, but my point is, it's like, you're not going to learn this in high school. No, you're gonna, not going to learn this in my macroeconomics no. in, in college. Uh, so, so the reality is that the people don't have a grasp of how money is created in our nation. And if you don't understand that, federally which is the reason we're here federally then you can't understand provincially how these provinces all of us we beg the feds for money back yeah transfer payments we beg them what if god forbid 
if John Horgan said, holy shit, COVID is so bad here, I'm going to allow a two-tiered healthcare system to make sure that everyone, everyone that could get care got care. What if he said that? Well, and you, Trudeau said, that's wrong. You don't get your, you don't get your, well, that's just it. 500 they're, million. They're held to ransom. Dollars. The provinces they are held to ransom. And, and that people, is not the right role of the feds. Don't understand that level of analysis though. They wouldn't put, wouldn't put pieces together. Right. I don't and, think. I and don't. we're not no, there yet. Right. That's my point. So the I don't flip, think we're ever going to be there. We will. We're so far off. We're, can see we that. as a party? No, I don't. No, 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 no. Even our party. You're no, right no, the, but as a, as a population, I don't think we're going to get there. It's just the only reason you can understand this because you're know. interested. Or I'm interested. And, and I read and a few I put books. Seven minutes into the, yeah, reading it. Yeah. But well, as far as the the, the, the you had to read a lot to understand right. those tens, so seven minutes. Right. Most people don't understand that. <laughs> so why don't they just print more money and it'll be easier? I mean, this is right. where most people are, and I'm not saying dumb right. people either, but this no. is not what people study. So, so it's frankly far, dry. Right. So as far as the debates go, uh, definitely, I mean, you, you look at most of these debates, both in the U.S. and Canada, federally, provincially, not a lot's changed on that stage. But what is changed is when somebody says the wrong thing. And I'll never forget, and it was John Horgan in the 2020 uh, uh, debate that they had televised. And he says, oh, I don't see color. Yeah. And it was like, even I, who, who thinks that splitting people down lines of uh, in, in segregationist. Well, uh, immutable traits. Or... Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. He, I knew that that was the wrong thing to say. And, it, and he took fire for it. So the best thing for John Horgan in that situation would have been to not be on that stage. <laughs> so what if Max Bernier was on a stage and they say, and he said what, the do, wrong what thing. do you think about immigration? And he said the wrong thing. Anything he because, says, they'll twist it. But, anyway, but that's but my yeah, point, is that will. there are 50% of the things that Bernier is going to say about Im immigration that I'm going to disagree with. And, well, I'm, and I'm on his too. side. And yeah. I'm on his side. So exactly. My point is that you get Max on that stage, there is a 50% chance he's going to have no increase. And there's a 50% chance he's going to lose votes. Yeah. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe we don't why, want to pass on that why we hit this taller why have we hit this tolerance level that we have to agree a hundred percent with everybody? Like we should never agree a hundred percent with your hand every if you agree like, with even your best friends is, on everything. Oh, 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 no, I don't no. Yeah. not even my husband. And, not myself. Yeah. Not even myself. No. You know, I'm being a libertarian. So yeah. <laughs> It's a and you watch, you watch Trudeau. He tried to bring the whole election down. And anytime someone tried to talk about something different, he's like climate change and the pandemic. That's all anybody cares about. Money. And we've lost our ability to have discourse. We've lost our ability to have intelligent conversations. Well, partly because we're not allowed to be around other people. Some of us less. Well, you can't even, even have an intelligent conversation about climate change, Mr. Trudeau. And I'm sorry, but Max is failing there too. Oh yeah, I don't even know what the climate policy is. I didn't, I, I didn't read it. The climate <laughs> policy of of what the PPC. The, the PPC. PPC. He doesn't really address it, but he's definitely against a carbon tax. And and I actually talked about the carbon tax with the uh, with the well with the PPC candidate in my riding. But then I went to an event with the uh, the conservative uh, fellow in my riding, and and I was really relieved that we agreed that it's just a, a a a cash grab he said it's a fundraiser and he said the word fundraiser and i almost kissed him i said thank you you, <laughs> you know it, you know you, you know and uh, you know and he starts first he starts talking about well you see in a, economics there's the elasticity of and i just say yeah you don't want to explain economics to me you don't no. want to play that game <laughs> i said because oh i well i just i just kind of said well oh so is is our fossil fuels inelastic and he's like uh well you know that's how it is i said so why are you doing it why did Aaron, Aaron O'Toole flip-flop and he says well because the people want it and we need to get into office I, I just like this I said thank you for not lying to well, me Aaron, thank you. Aaron O'Toole's carbon whatever was such a bizarre boondoggle thing it wasn't oh even it's like, just ridiculous it basically he said you know can, can they'll you never be explain it to me no no, no. I mean like so, I skimmed so, it I'm like what the my, my point is is that like, even the liberal movement. version it's not it's simply saying if the provinces don't do it, we'll do it. 
and they're doing it anyway. And, and, We're and, getting hit yeah. double here. So if the province doesn't the do it, we will, federally yeah, will do it. It's arguably so, better so even than though, the O'Toole one, which was like some That sounds better. Because he, he said right, there isn't no, going to be one, and now he's trying to make it less harmful. You know, all it is is upward flowing money and that's what here's we need a to be explaining here's to a people. conservative platform Good conservative point. party you, platform Senator. forget carbon tax carbon tariffs you want a carbon tax Ooh, carbon better tariffs. word better For word what? carbon tariffs and well, I, I, if you, I hate tariffs if you have to, i hate tariffs if you have to appeal to the carbon tax block of voters which is a lot of people believe in this sort of thing and, and believe they it's do. important Carbon, I'm not saying a, climate change income, addressing that isn't important, but people a, need to understand that it's just do an it's income just tax, tax uh, an income tax reduction that's proportionate to any carbon tax increase. A and instead of doing it on the domestic production, do it on tariffs on imports on so imported tax, production. Yeah, so on I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna not lay this medicine. out that between oh, Keith this and Don, everybody though Sandra and I we're not gonna solve climate change tonight if there's anything to solve. I am, but no, no, no. you're not. Okay, I've decided. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, mean, I, I think there are a lot more that that solutions I, I, than I problems. Lo I, I love your idea. Change the word to tariffs because well, it doesn't work. It, it, no, it, no, I'm sorry. Are on a, a tax on imports. So yes, I get that, but all of a sudden, all tax. of a sudden, we're raising prices for 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 of the cost of goods and services, and who does that hurt the most? Lower well, income households. No, but you're doing that first and, and anyway. middle income. Okay, and, 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 hold, and, hold you know, on. As a proportion, I mean, they're going to pay as much, but as a proportion, they're going to pay less. No, we're, you're right. And then what? Okay, we're doing we're going to lose. We're going to lose the audience if we start getting into details like this. But I'm going to I'm going to tell you what the climate change crisis is is a it's a tool of the political parties to 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 keep us in a fear state keep us feeling guilty for living in order to get more tax and maintain control exactly. it doesn't actually matter whether man-made climate change is real or is it a thing or is is or it isn't is the, the it problem is that we need to, all the scientists yeah, say well, it is. yeah. I've heard oh the 97 percent of the scientists no, I'm not are paid, that, but, that was bullshit but, that was bullshit but here here's but but here's the thing it doesn't actually matter because because if the government is using it as a tool to keep us in fear in order to, to maintain power that's the problem and that's the thing we have to get people to, to notice whether it's a pandemic whether it's climate change whether it's whatever um wars you know they they keep us in this constant state of fear in order to to make us afraid Absolutely. enough to vote big parties and, and we, we can't have us, a freedom loving party. give us a, a little bit more of your money and you yeah. know the thing is and then there are people out there and what they're doing the the people that are are complaining about this they're getting handed back a little bit i mean they're taking your dollars and they're trying to shut you up with pennies and people are, are okay with this i think this is really problematic yeah, it's, all, it's all a show oh, and also it's, our, it's all our, a show our, game. Our, our carbon footprint has increased with with the addition of of uh of these carbon taxes and people say oh well yeah that's because the um that's because we've we've had more people here we had some immigration and the population's increased yeah all of those guys are paying the carbon tax too so if it worked it would work it's scalable if it works yeah it and, doesn't. And this has happened for hundreds of years they look they look for a way to divide the population and to keep us in fear and then we vote vote them in and um, and the, the problem is they're better at it now. They have more money. They have more marketing analysts. They have more data analysts. They have more strategists. And, and we end up in this constant uh, cycle, as we know, where we keep electing the same people over and over again. And this election, we're going to elect the same exact government. And, you know, frankly, I mean, the, the, the conservatives wouldn't have been any better. Really? No. They're... they're, no. they're... <laughs> They, they're just their policies are virtually indistinguishable from from those of the liberals agreed just it's just a current to me We've, well, although i i think what will happen i i think trudeau's time is done sorry oh, didn't mean to talk over i think trudeau's time is done because this election is going to end up exactly the same and he's faltered so bad i i think he will finally absolutely resign and i know there's going to be another snake behind him that's going to take over but i'm i'm very excited to not have to look at his uh i agree no way I, he's not resigning off. after this he's not resigning so, after this so no 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 I, I just saw his results in just his writing i know it's not federally it's just his writing yeah he tripled basically tripled the next competitor oh jesus 
So and they and they were worried that because he had spent his time abroad, like across the nation, like we were talking about, about Max, Bernier. that Trudeau would lose votes. No, he tripled, and maybe it's double now. Maybe they've caught up. But uh, but that's the same, Alex. That's the same for every leader, though, except for Bernier, right? Like Bernier O'Toole won, got tripled. O'Toole got won by a lot, right? Um, I, I think your word for it. Jagmeet's going to win by a lot. So Maybe. I don't really like everybody seems to, to, to love voting for the leader, especially yeah. when they're in their oh, riding. Fair enough. I, I hear you. Yeah, uh, but they don't run strong candidates against those actual federal leaders. Oh, maybe right? that you're right there. That makes sense. That actually makes Why sense. Why would you put yourself? Actually, I read an article about that, about how uh, the, these lame duck candidates that run against the run against uh, the prime ministers and okay. stuff i have a question that i know alex is going to disagree on uh, from the crowd um <laughs> should proportional representation be a thing ppr guys go well i think ppr would work for a smaller party no but ah! no 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 i said i think it would but we voted no, against it we actually had this the question we had this meeting I remember and you and you were there and we actually talked about it at length and discussed it and and we arrived at no it just creates more government more bureaucracy i think in practical result it's but a, but if you look at what's happening you, you look uh, at what's uh, happening in new uh, zealand uh, and oh, okay yeah you, no no, no. We, we all agreed it. we all we all so, agreed so, so I, i'm for proportional representation if you look what's happening in new zealand where they where they the freedom the police state keith look <laughs> what's <laughs> happening in fucking new zealand are you serious <laughs> Yeah, but the look act, what's happening no, in New Zealand. But the act, God. the act party God. actually has a voice. Yeah. They, the act party has raised raised their profile. Oh, fantastic! It's still a concentration camp there. Yeah, I agree, and so are we. We're right behind them. Oh, we're, oh, we're, we're not. We're not. We're not New Zealand, Australia. Not yet, we're anyway. Terrible and terrifying. We're on our way there. We're they're the leading leading factors for us. But the fact is, they do have members of parliament in here. And they, here's the thing: this whole this whole idea of uh, you know ridings and representatives are it's less relevant now. Like, why why aren't we having uh, like we don't we don't know who's going to be finance minister? Like, why does it make sense in our electoral system where the prime minister gets to choose their finance minister or their health minister? Imagine if say provincial politics, we got to vote for our health minister. I'd be voting for. Uh, uh, with Dr. Day that went to the Supreme Court to battle for our rights. Yeah. Um, we yeah. we don't get to, we get garbage in we all of the minutes. Right. We can should I have, have those should be voted just, positions uh, want, as well. Can I have an agenda point here? Just uh, we're an hour and 10 minutes into this federal debate, a uh, federal election live stream coverage. I don't think we've discussed the results. Not enough. Since we, no, Not, no, 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 I don't no, think, I don't think all? we've told the people at all. That there is going to be a lip, that the results are going to be exactly the same as they were before, plus or minus one or two seats, maybe. Right. There's going to be yeah, a liberal minority. I don't think we said that on the stream, actually. There's, there's going to be no. a liberal minority government, um, almost exactly the same results. So that's the black pill. Except I think we're just a little bit poorer now. So here, a little, a little bit, $600 <laughs> Don, million. Just, dollars. Uh, I just want to speak to the the proportional representation. Oh, so not. Okay. He's yeah, been holding his breath here. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I, it. I we we, we need to change who we're electing, not how we're electing them, because it doesn't matter if the, it's the same politicians. If you give the parties more power on who has at large uh, rights to uh, appropriate, you know, let's say your area got. A certain percentage you're like yeah you're allowed to have two liberals for this area well now the party decides that so there's actually less democracy to it it's like you look at it like a percentage a yeah but, the, but, but, but when you show up no but when you show up to the ballot and you see those names you know exactly those are the only people that could represent you there's no like well the party could pick somebody on at random like those are the only people and that's why i voted none of the above because those were the five names that I had to choose from. So now if suddenly I picked for the Liberal Party, their slate or whatever, and that slate got a certain percentage and that percentage turned out to be like, oh, you get three representatives. You get two who live here and one at large and the government, that, that party gets to pick that one at large. Well, suddenly now that's less democratic than it used to be. Mm. So I, I am thinking the PPR is less democratic. Would it help smaller parties? Maybe, and I don't care. 
Fuck the small but why, family. Why is democracy? Why is demo, Why is democracy always always the number one thing? So if you look, if you look at a what are you talking if, about? If you look, if no, if, if you look at a lot of you have. It's all, all we have. have. I agree. It's not the. It's not the best. It, it's yeah, trash, it's, but it's all we have. It's trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it doesn't have to be all we have. Like if, if you if you think if you think about so let's take our party for example. We know everybody really well, and we're not corrupt, and we're not. But if, if we had a proportional amount, we would actually choose the best the best people to represent our party in a proportional representation. And 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 I, I would submit that in a lot of a lot of cases, the general electorate doesn't know. Like Don, to Don's point, when he was talking to random people, they don't know. They don't care. And and this this whole idea of fifty percent plus one isn't necessarily um, the, the best approach. It's obviously got us into a pretty bad place. I'm not saying I have a solution for that, but um, but we got to try something different to get some different voices in there. Oh, that's a valid point about both you get the in and then you choose the best person to do that job. I mean that makes sense. The party, like you say people don't know everybody but we know who's the best people are in our party to to do this or that position uh, that's valid but then you get corrupt but then that can, it's corruptible too but every system is corruptible everything's corruptible that's why it's right. important to keep it small so good point getting it not like we answered the the commenter question so we're doing think, our think, live stream duty but let's get back to the matter at hand and that's results. the federal election yeah so i mean so it's right. 157 121 Ooh, 29 for the block, 29 for the NDP, and two for the green. Almost identical. The the NDP increased their seats by three. Uh, um, ooh, liberals, liberals and conservatives literally are at the exact same spot they were. Can I just can I just read from my own edification? August 12th, I tweeted. <laughs> I tweeted. Follow me at DNS Wilson on Twitter. August 12th. I tweeted, upcoming federal election, time for the crystal ball. <laughs> One, record low turnout. We haven't seen that yet, so maybe I'm wrong there. Two, similar overall result. Three, Greens at minus, uh, sorry, Greens at about 70% of their previous total votes. Four, PPC struggles to field a full slate, but does better per candidate. Five, cons and liberals flat or down NDP up what do you think I get it right is that about uh, that's pretty so the, the the cons are up by two right now uh, okay so I said flat or down they're up by two I mean uh, um, plus or minus but, two is is within the error of margin right for sure so you you nailed everything greens will get two seats by the looks of it um, one because the the one seat that they're getting is in Kitchener where that liberal guy got charged with rape and had to drop out. So nobody voted for him. They're taking that seat, eh? The Greens are? Greens are, yeah. Oh, hilarious. Oh, all right. Kitchener. Interesting. Yeah. I just, I just popped up. Uh, we forgot to talk about our other provincial candidate, Jody Craven, who is running yes. for PPC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. He is yeah. a, uh, there's only 10% of the polls reporting, but he is in a tight race. There is a uh, three-way tie for third place, essentially. He's currently at 6.8% of the vote. The parachute candidate who doesn't live there, Lackwinder Josh, 7.4 and the green 7.7. So I think uh, you know, it'll be really great to see Jody Craven um, get, get some more votes there. He, work, he works hard out there. Who's in and he actually lives in the riding. Uh, second place is the conservative. It's, it's for some reason, I don't understand why an NDP stronghold. Huh. Union. Is that fifty-seven point four percent? It has been for a really long time. NDP is not a party of the unions anymore. No, no. I mean, this is this is not the party of Jack Layton. I mean, this is just oh, Jack Layton. That guy. If Jack Layton was still alive and still running the NDP, I may have voted orange this time around. That man understood what was dividing this nation. He just also thought that statism was the way to fix it. 
and therein lies the problem that's why yes i'm i couldn't you, you can support wait. that yeah <laughs> late leighton stood up for labor i mean jagmeet singh is pretty much an elitist that he no really one's is. gonna that's, go out ahead said really hardly anything for labor at all no, no nothing well, one comment actually, one comment i could remember which was when when trudeau brought started talking about basically making you know vaccines mandatory yep. for everybody in the whole country i think jagmeet singh had a comment that we need to we need to talk to the unions first. At least he exactly. said that. He like, did like, say that. We need to talk to the unions. Well, at least he's smart well, enough he's to know like, that he might get yeah, some pushback think, there. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, well, that's maybe the difference some other people between too, a statist and like, a dictator. Yeah. <laughs> would, you guys like to hear my, would you guys like to hear my story of when I met Jagmeet Singh and Penn Let's do it. Do it. Two, two minutes or less? Let's do it. Yeah, I'll, hear it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. So he was, I, I pop, up, pop up Facebook and he's on a live stream downtown. So a few of us hop in the car <laughs> and uh, we go to ask him some questions. We got there kind of a little bit too late and I saw him walking away. I rolled down the window and yelled taxation steps. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> he actually laughed. Like it was, I appreciated that. But then uh, later, a couple hours later, we were going to the beach and, uh, and my sister said, hey, there he is and I'm like hey let me out of the car so I go to talk to him it's only him and MP uh, Dick Cannings and I introduce myself and Dick and I know each other I actually respect the guy as a human being I don't like his politics but you can't say anything bad about Dick Cannings and and Jagmeet completely ignored me as if I wasn't a human being a, a young couple came up and they they uh, wanted a selfie an autograph he jumped me talked to them wouldn't make eye contact with me and then he sat down and he deliberately sat there and he looked and he turned his head slowly and looked off into the distance and wouldn't acknowledge that I was even a person. That's the kind of leader that guy is. Yeah, he, he's, he, I've seen some personal sides to him that I think are really, uh, you know, really dubious character, very, uh, you know, sort of quick to judge people, very, ju very judgmental person. Um, mm -hmm. you know, very, very high on himself. You know, there's, there's good things you can say about him. He presents well, but, uh, you know, as on a personal level and I've, I've met him as well and I've seen, interacted with him. Um, you know, I, I think he is, uh, he's got a poor quality character, uh, quite, quite frankly. Um, he's, mm -hmm. he's got a lot of anger and he's a very prejudiced person. Um, can I just throw in a white pill as well? At least it's a white pill for me. You know, there's been a lot of black pills tonight. That we're yeah. in exactly the same place we were before. Max Bernier is not going to win his seat. The PPC no. aren't going to win a seat, probably. No. Uh, but uh, I'm looking at Elections Canada right now, and the PPC is presently at 5.2% uh, of the total vote total. Huh. Um, you know, and that's more than triple their, more than triple. That's about triple, yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's further it's more, ahead than the oh, Greens. Oh, wait, it's exact, exactly triple? Uh, roughly. Yeah. Just say triple, Don. Move on from 3. this. 3.24. No, it's more than triple. It's more than triple their, uh, their results from last time. So yeah. they are, you know, that's a significant move up. Um, it's about two and a half times the votes that the Greens have gotten. Yeah. <clears throat> The PPC are beating the Greens by about two and a half times in terms of total votes. Oh my God, the Greens are taking such a beating. I almost <sighs> feel sorry for them. Just as long as it's almost. almost. No, it's almost. Don, while you're still here, because I know you, you, yeah, you have I, somewhere else I, to I be. I pushed the time. Uh, here, 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 we've got else. more beer. <laughs> Don, last do question for you. Up. You're talking about white pill, black pill. What would you need to see the PPC and or Libertarian Party of Canada, but mostly PPC? What, what would you need to see from them for you to feel good about yourself when you walk out this door? Like I, I know this country is in good hands. That like, did you need to see seats? Did you need to see a certain percentage? Did you need to see just one person do well? Did you need to see one riding where they were close? Not even win, but close. Yeah, I mean, in terms of doing well, this country doing well, I needed to see a few seats. You need to see seats. Yeah. I, I, Okay. Yeah, I, I, I need to see like one to three to you know, maybe five seats to be like, okay, we're go we're we can save this. Yeah. So I mean, I mean looking, looking objectively, objective. the party's done well for party politics, but I think the country is in a really, really dark place right now, and and uh, you know I'm worried about my fellow fellow countrymen. Um, I hope I hope Trudeau sees this as the defeat that it is. 
And to Keith's point mm -hmm. earlier, I oh, hope he's he not does. Smart enough to see that. But uh, I'm afraid he won't, and and they'll just keep powering powering through, pretending this is some kind of moral victory. Um, you uh. know, so you know, and, and that's they're at five point two percent. And keep in mind that sixty two percent of polls reporting the West Coast reports later. Right. right. So there's chances that'll that that will go up. It'll, it'll, sorry go to up. sorry to interrupt, but interrupt. Maryam Mo Monsef that uh liberal who said oh. who called the, the taliban her brother she just her lost yeah right. oh thankfully you know what that that Thank woman you, Canada. That yeah. was a little white call there there's nothing yeah. that about and her she, that. she lost by she lost by about three thousand votes what's, what riding was she in Sorry. what's what what riding is she from what, what province uh ontario, ontario. Uh, okay and on that i must bid you all adieu Thank you, Don. I've got, Thank you, Don. Yeah. To. I've, got a, I've got a candidate in my riding who's hosting a party and wondering where the hell I am right now. He got 5.4% so far, which is not bad. That's you know, not like bad. For Very a, good. a tiny new party, self-funded candidate. You know what I mean? Like yep, that, that's, that's impressive. A, you know, that's a major, you know, it's a major improvement on, on what what we normally roll out. So Thank I'm, you, I'm gonna Don. go join him. Thank you, Don, for coming out. Uh uh, your tech support and also your uh, yeah, your ability to this. bounce all the ideas around here. Like, I really appreciate you being here. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Guys. So I had one question that I would have liked to get everybody's opinion on. Alex, me and you had talked about it before, but why doesn't the indigenous population of Canada create their own political party? Why don't they create their own? I don't know. They, they have 5% of the population. Vote? Why don't they vote? You they're, gotta they're, start they there. have low voter turnout. Very low. Yeah, that's a whole. But they depend, on, they depend on the liberals or everybody for, for these issues and get ignored, right? So for me, I view it that they could be as powerful as the block is. Thanks, if they, no, Bye, they're only 5% of the population. They, well, they couldn't, no, and that's assuming all of them would vote. Thank you. Andrew. I don't have anything useful to say on this topic. I'm tired this Hi, Don. I gotta go. Thanks, Don. See, See you later. So, Andrew, uh, since you and I chatted on this, I uh, I did a little bit of research, and I'm I was trying to bring it up on my smartphone, and I'm just gonna abandon that. But uh, there was there have been multiple First Nations federal parties, and none of them have any any traction some of them have had a handful of candidates much like a lot of small parties like the maverick party and whatnot but uh yeah the, the they actually merged two first nations average indigenous parties uh and and the gist of it was is that they were not able to get voter turnout to make them into a, a relevant uh political entity uh obviously at some point you're if you're at the table, and this is to my point as a libertarian candidate, I just want to be at the table and then I'm going to force other people to listen to my issues. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole point of having a First Nations political party. And they thought they had that and then they just didn't have the momentum for it. So Andrew, this has happened since you and I talked on camera in this room, I've looked into it. It has happened, it failed. And it's probably because of something that Don and Sandra just said, voter turnout amongst that demographic. Yeah, they really, they're, they are low voter turnout. Um, and, and also, we should not be assuming that all of those 5% of the people will vote the same way. Oh, I hope they don't. No, I, I hope they saying, vote the opposite. That they would, they will not be yeah. a voting block. No, gosh, they will no. never be a voting block. I think yeah. it'd be, it'd be it's, yeah. it'd be an incorrect assumption to okay. assume well Couldn't that they will more. all vote in the same direction. Right. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to talk to Frank about this because I, I know that first. There's we a have lot. talked to Frank Bush about this. Is that's who Keith, um, Keith is referring to? He's a First Nations activist and an author and a businessman. Of course, he he wrote uh, Gray Gray Eyes. Is the name of the book correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which you can you can buy he's a very bright guy and we did talk to him about it and and he was saying that you know we should form some sort of um alliance libertarian alliance he, he seems to believe that a lot of the first nations people are libertarians without knowing it and well it'd sure be nice to see um the first nations communities have actual property rights over the land they're so generously allowed to live on don't you think 
and that's unfortunately a federal issue. Again, well, and we're here for a federal, federal talk. It's, and, and, and it's not a, just a federal issue. It's not just a federal issue, though. It's also because, provincial, though. Yeah, it is provincial because so Penticton has property rights. Penticton Indian Band has property rights. So Studious Indian Band, West Bank First Nation has property rights. The co-working space I'm in, the office was uh, former uh, Chief Noel Derrickson, and in the 70s, he negotiated a special form of property rights for West right. Bank First Nation. I think it's also important to mention, Keith, that that these particular um, groups that you're talking about, that these First Nations communities that you're talking about are actually statistically doing better in in terms of prosperity, health, et cetera, et cetera, than, than the, the average. In First Nations I, and, and I don't so know it's, what it's the, working. And I don't know what the statistics you're naming are, but I assume they include homelessness and employment. It, it, employment, like those are two uh, yeah, big the homelessness ones. And, yeah. and health, physical health, violence, yeah. th those kind yeah. of things yeah. that that yeah. Yeah, I talked to Chief, Chief uh, Chris Derrickson, the current chief in West Bank, and uh, entrepreneurship is up. Um, lot, lots of lots of different factors that that he feels are important. And, you know, if you've been been through West Bank, West Kelowna, you like it's it's a very integrated um, society where it's actually a very good model where you have the city of West Kelowna and West Bank First Nation both working in um, concert together. They, they're sharing resources. They're working together. You can drive on one road and you can travel between West Bank First Nation and city of West Kelowna five times. Um, but it all goes back to property rights that Noel Derrickson uh, negotiated back in the 70s. And most First Nations in Canada, uh, every, every province except for British Columbia don't have property rights. So the property belongs to the band. And in the way that our world works, if you don't have the ability to leverage your property, it's very hard to get even a credit card. It's very hard to get a business loan. I got line of credit for my business because I owned, owned my house. Well, if I didn't have that... I couldn't start my business and who knows where I would be right now. Maybe I'd be happier. I don't know. Be a, a government employee or something. Yeah. <laughs> you don't mean that. So no, mean that. Joke. <laughs> sarcasm. sarcasm. Oh. <laughs> no, but, but that's right. We did have that conversation um, at that one meeting with, with, with Frank that, that he that Bush, showed up right? with. Yeah, yeah, Frank Bush. I haven't met him yet. B-U-S-C-H. Yeah. Hell of a guy. Maybe he's watching. Hey, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he was gonna he was gonna watch because uh, they didn't want to watch the CBC coverage all night. You find the um, he also knows uh, Jody. Yeah, he also knows Jody Wilson uh, Raybould right. fairly well, and uh, he's been talking to me a lot about her book and stuff. Uh, yeah, he's just a just a yeah fantastic uh, guy doing some great stuff with his business too. So, so yeah. since we are in the exact same situation, right. Let's talk about the one thing that I want to talk about. Oh, I just wrote it on my paper. I, want, I bet it's the same thing. Bring it, Andrew. Don't forget to swear. Is it the S word? It's the S word. Oh, here we go. Are we better off as British Columbia? For the viewers, tell us what is the S word? Succession. 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 I don't like this... When they made the prediction of the liberal min minority government, it was literally two minutes after the British Columbia and Alberta polls closed. Yeah. Yep. Two minutes. We don't, they don't, we have zero we say. Considered. We are not even considered. Difference makers. Yeah, we're yeah. not difference makers. To me, we, we have a central, we have a guy who wants to, grab the power and put it in Ottawa. And that's bad news for every province, but especially British Columbia. Yeah. I think now is the time that we move forward about succession and, and seriously consider the Republic of British Columbia. So, so Andrew, uh, Sandra and I had a very brief conversation on this. It, lasted a matter of seconds but it was basically are we going to be better off if we secede from the dominion of canada and that in itself is a long conversation that would take more than the last 45 minutes that we have on air but let's just 
let's just say, let's just assume first and foremost that we are better off if we secede from the Dominion of Canada. I'm going to assume that. Okay. Where are you going? So with the, this? Ne- the next step I want to say is it's are we going to be able to convince the majority of British Columbians to secede from the Dominion of Canada? Are we, are, I know that in the United States, there's been a lot of chit chat about this uh, secession, about making maybe Texas its own state, Florida its own some, state, some or all country. the red, yeah. all the red states their own New state, Hampshire. which is ridiculous. New Hampshire, because of, New Hampshire, New Hampshire has a motion. Good point. Someone Good point. put a motion in. Yeah, that, that, but awesome. th- this but, goes to but, your to your point though, right. Alex. You had said earlier that we have to beg and plead for money for health care. Basically, we collect taxes. But only after we provide the money first. We, we <laughs> have to collect. <laughs> only, the, only then do we get to beg for our own money. Back. That's my yeah. point, though, is we have to we have to collect the money. We send it to Ottawa, and then we beg to get our money back. But, and well, how are you going to convince the majority? Because there's no way this would happen without a referendum. And I think right. we, know that. I, we all know that. Right. How are you going to convince people saying we're better off without Trudeau we're better off without Ottawa, without the RCMP, and we're better off without the Canadian military, which I'm sure that would be the easiest sell of all of them. But the, re- the we reality... Could, we, could still, we could still have the Canadian military. I think. Actually, as an ally, you're right. Here's the, here's the thing. It's pretty lame anyway. It, <laughs> you, you guys, we were talking about it earlier. The, we, we live in a democracy. It's not great. But the one thing about our democracy is I don't have to, I don't have to convince the majority. I just have to convince about thirty percent of the population. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. So if I can convince thirty percent, or we can convince thirty percent of the population that this is a good idea, then we move forward. That's how this democracy is is based, whether that's good or bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. How realistic is that? I mean, assuming like Alex says that it's a good idea, you're, you're looking at greater Vancouver. Oof. Yeah. That's where that, that's, that's, that's where that's the population. That's where, that's where good ideas go to die. I, I, <laughs> I think, I think if you look I at it, I with you more, I think. <laughs> no, I, I know you guys in the communist mainland. I don't know. I don't know how how things work down there it doesn't really me and alex are lucky we're allowed to stay honestly it really made (laughs) never made sense to me but if you look at the history of how our our western provinces got created and sir wilfred laurier he deliberately split up the provinces because they wanted to rape our resources Mm -hmm. and they didn't want us to have part power right so the there was supposed to be larger provinces and they split them up into smaller so that we're fighting amongst each other if we're going to talk secession, and I know it's not necessarily practical, but realistically, a good chunk of BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan are all, and you know, I guess Manitoba out of pity, we're all fairly quite cohesive in how we how we think and how we act, and we we have agriculture, we have resources, um, and and I think you know the idea of secession, if we can if we can do it with um a province like alberta who's got a bit of a bigger movement from that yeah i i think it's something worth exploring i'm not saying hey let's jump on and do it but uh canada is not serving us right now like you, you look at eastern canada and like you look at most of people in western canada and, canada and they and they can can you imagine like how many people do you know actually are like wow you know vote justin trudeau Yet most of Eastern Canada did just that. Like, like what goes on? I don't know. I haven't spent a lot of time in Ontario. I don't know what goes on out there, but I, I don't think that we're necessarily a cohesive society. My my dream actually is to secede to, to uh, convince Alaska, Alaska, the Yukon, Interior uh. BC. Of- then you go down through uh, Idaho, Montana, Colorado. You flip through Nevada and Texas and we have a really good strong country up there of uh, strong values and hard workers but I know that's not ever going to happen well but you you can sell it on the fact that we have we can regardless of how I personally feel about taxation and everything like that us getting the chance to 
decide what we do with our tax money, spend it on the areas that we need to spend it on, spend it on healthcare, cr create a, a system that, that works for everybody where we don't have to give money first and then take, give them a thousand dollars to get $300 back after every, every one of those. You talk about the RCMP. How many communities in British Columbia do you think are happy with the service the RCMP are providing them right now? More than zero, less than 300. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Like, uh, I know that one resident in one municipality is unhappy. That's me. That's all I can tell you. Right. What, 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 I would bet. I would bet that it. That it's a gonna, lot. No. No. How are you gonna like? There are some provinces that have provincial police units, and they're happy with that because that's what they have. Because yeah. it's cheap. It's cheaper than it's cheap. Is it effective? Your own. Yeah. So what they're going to look at is the same reason that all these shitty self-sustaining municipalities say is, oh, we want the RSCP because it's a 10% decrease in what we have to pay. Mm. Well, no, it's, it's a, it, the federal tax dollars pay that 10%. All the taxpayers still pay it. Are still paying it. It's just yeah. not out of your budget. Yeah. So no, the RCMP thing. Well, you mean Sandra Keith and probably everyone on the air still watching us agrees that is nonsense. The majority of these municipalities and the people in charge of making those choices are thinking, "Wow, I'm so glad we saved that." Yeah. nine thousand dollars exactly i could hire that extra green coordinator yeah uh, I, don't, I don't know Pen penticton's talked about their own police force a bunch of times and there are bc Good. ones but andrew i want to talk about this, this idea because i've been thinking about this a lot too so let's let's talk federal. this imaginary world where horgan goes down and flames and everybody realizes statism is wrong and the libertarian party becomes in power do you think it's practical that we could actually create our own, um, we agree taxation is theft, but it exists right now. Could we create our own system and tell our local businesses, instead of submitting your federal, your, your taxes and your remittances right to the federal government, submit it to us. And we're gonna make the federal government beg for the money that they think they deserve. Obviously we'd be get sued and there's constitutional challenges and all this kind of stuff, but why, why why should we be giving our money to the federal government first and they decide how to divvy it up give it to us first and we decide to give it back andrew andrew i got this i got this so uh keith i i heard a speech from uh serge uh brisson uh he was the former leader of the federal libertarian party and he gave his, his spiel on when he was a small business owner he owned a muffler shop i don't know how small business it was but yeah. business owner and they started riding his ass and he decided you know what gst they're only giving me a few hundred bucks credit annually to collect it fuck that shit i'm gonna stop collecting it and what so, happened and well the gist of it was is they came to his place of work and they uh they started threatening him so he what he would do is he would write on every receipt I am not collecting GST. If you think you should pay the GST, go ahead. <laughs> you have to go to the Canadian Revenue Agency and pay it. Nice. And of course, nobody does. Yeah. But the, he, ended up, he ended up getting threatened. So he went into their office and he had his business license. He's like, here, he lit it on fire, tossed it in a trash can. And, and, and then and, what? And, well, the, the gist of it is, is they eventually left him, left him alone, but not before trying to garnish everything out of his bank account that they could. Personally or for his business? Personally. Uh -huh. And he, that's when he said is two two lessons to learn. And this is way off topic. That's an important lesson. But, but two lessons. One, never have overdraft because the government will put you in debt to take money from you. Definitely. And number two, make sure no spouses are attached to your business license because mm -hmm. they will take from them as well. Uh, and and, the, and wife, the spouse's name is probably is not, on the house. And his wife was not on the business license. And so she was safe. Wow. But they took into his, his overdraft. So, but the, the gist of it was, it's like, yeah, you can fight that. And he went to court and all the things and eventually. Well, then he had a deep enough war chest too. The average business person can't no. do that. Right. 
and 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 but, yeah and and might so, not be that principle they'll just shut up and take right, it and shut up and take it so to your point uh keith is is like how how is the how is the average libertarian small business owner going to mount that battle because i'm not a small business owner i don't have capital to be a small business owner but mm -hmm. i i i have the principles for it i don't have the capital there are many people who have the capital that are just like, I finally got to the point where I have the capital. The last thing I want to do is risk rock the it. Boat. Yeah, they don't want to risk it. Yeah. Well, my, my my point was though is if if we were in power, which we would immediately start trying to distribute it back to the people. But if we were in power and we said to our small businesses in British Columbia, we don't want you to submit your taxes to the federal government. We want you to submit it to us. Would 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 that be a powerful enough statement to say to the federal government? I mean, of course they'd hammer us and they have so many ways of coercion, like, and, yeah. and to your point of being off topic, like the topic right now is, is the, our freedom and, and, and our future of humanity to be put it bluntly right now, things are in a pretty bad state. Um, but they, they do have this coercion technique. And if you look at a, a lot of what's happening with the pandemic, I've been on uh, some doctors have been on calls with, with Dix and Henry and Horgan and the federal government is bribing them with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars um, to, to push, to push the narrative. So, you know, if we were, and, and this is probably why people like Jason Kenney and Ralph Klein and other, like we're, we're in such a mess with the federal government, like, is it reasonable for us to even possibly extract yourself from that? Or do they have enough coercion techniques with us and enough ability to take away our money? And maybe that, maybe this is one way where if we get the small businesses and we get behind them and say, Hey, stop giving your money to the federal government. I don't know. It's a, it's probably a pipe dream and I'm rambling, but it's a pipe dream. I think so. It's like, we, you know, we're principled to become a felon for us. I don't know. I, I, the idea is great. And I think before secession, for me, that's the last, last ditch thing. I think we need to really focus on influencing a retreat of the federal government. The, the provinces need to be much more loosely affiliated as a nation. And, and we need to be part of this affiliation where it suits us this is the, the, the we need to to make the fed step back and that's why i disagree with you here keith that that it is important to involve ourselves as citizens in federal politics not just provincial that's that's one thing i liked about bernier he's he's the only one talking about shrinking the size and scope of government everyone else every single other uh, team running is trying to make it bigger right every single yeah. one and bigger is never, never ever ever cheaper you, you can't make anything cheaper by adding several layers of 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 paperwork to it yeah, we're creating jobs you can't create even one job you're you're just redistributing money and 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 lying yeah. they're lying they're lying well, they, they always lie they're very they good always lie but another uh, facebook comment and they ask if uh, we think that we can win a seat in the next provincial election. Oof, probably not. I think but, yes, because oh. we've got lots of time to, we've yeah. got time. We've, we've got, because of the last election, we've got a little bit more money and we've got, we're, yeah. you know, we've got more candidates winning. We're definitely blipping on the radar now. Right. Because, because we got a lot more votes than the last one. So yeah, I think in the right place, we can win a seat. And, you know, I think, I think especially in your neck of the woods, Keith, and I've said this to you before, you've got great momentum and a lot of like-minded people out in your in your area, in the Okanagan. But it, I, personally- And the me, island, I think we can do all right there my, too. My short take is it's not gonna be Keith and Penticton. It's gonna be one of our Northern candidates. It's gonna be Jody, or it's gonna be, um, uh, not Jeff, because that was a federal candidate. Um, who's our, uh, John, uh, John Rample. Yeah. It's going to be one of those guys who were up around the 10% mark, 8% mark, mm -hmm. who all they, all they really. Yeah, need yeah I, I, I think. Go. Sorry, you're frozen. I'm gonna, Are you I'm frozen gonna or is he just, yeah, just, just pensive? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think that's going to be the case. I think 
uh, Akeem McIntyre, federal or provincial party leader, is going to make a difference media wise, and that's what we need, and that's why we need our federal party leader not to be in the lower mainland because you get lost in the lower mainland. Yeah. So that's why I think that's it's so point, important Alex. that not only is Keith a good speaker and he's got good connections, but he's not in the lower mainland. He's in Penticton and that's going to make a huge difference. I agree. And, and then the next step is who's going to actually have a shot at getting elected. Personally, I think zero. You think maybe some, but if it's going to be some, it's going to be the people in those races. That's what I think where, out where, there that what they're where, already doing kind of well. They're already like yeah. they're already hitting the 8% mark. Yeah. The 10% mark. People already know who they and, are. And what are they going to have to do to get to the next step? I don't know. That's not a debate for today, but it's well, I actually, I, I think it's very, it's very easy. I think to it's decide. possible. Ugh. I think it's very easy to know what to do to get those percentages up, and that's have a cohesive team across the entire province. And you know what? This might be a good time to mention for everyone watching: donations. They help. We need the signs. We need the yeah. to, to buy the the time, the air and time. It, yeah, and here here's Social something. Media, yeah. help us out. Every single one yeah. of us here has has donated their own money to the party, and we continue to do that. I paid for yeah. my own campaign. I bet That's you paid for your own That's campaign. Yep. And we had some donations, but the lion's share of it is, is us. So we're mm -hmm. doing it. I, I humbly ask everyone out there to please hit that donate button button on our those, website. Those 70 to 7,000 people to watch watching right now. Like really. <laughs> oh. So it's a slow night, six, I guess. <laughs> six to 6,000, yeah. whatever it is. It, it, I it, think our path, I think our path to, to winning a seat is to, remind everybody that we were the only party in the province that came out against vaccine passports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And you know, and I want to also that's emphasize a huge, there. That's a huge defight, decisive issue that we, we can sit there in three years, be like, Hey, when they turned on you, we were the only one speaking out Yeah. when they wanted to treat you as a second class citizen. We were the only one speaking out. We were the only ones fighting for this. And I think that that is going to. Hopefully that'll resonate with some people. I think it'll well, resonate with a lot more than. And, than... and, and we're, the only, we're the only ones that have been. No, oh, I think I'm praising. We're the only ones that have been fighting for freedom since 1986. Yep. Also, like freedom is not something new for us. Like it's new for the PPC. It's, it's not something yeah and, 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 it's, and yeah. it's so important the media is trying very hard to to paint us as anyone that's that's you know and and the ppc and everybody as anti-vaxxers and you know i don't think it has anything at all to do with vaccination it's it's to do with your own medical privacy it's to do with what else can go on an electronic passport and, and, you know, and then people say, oh, well, your information's already on your phone. Yeah, but I'm not obligated to carry that phone and I don't need it to go anywhere. It's like, oh, you already had a, a, a you know, a vaccination certificate saying you've been shot for, for polio. It's like, yeah, but I've never had to prove to anyone that I'm not, a, I'm a polio risk when I wanted to go out and get some lunch, you know, they're not seeing the connection. And this is not about vaccines, if you ask me. This is no, about it, control. It isn't, isn't it? And I think what's going to happen after this election is the PPC are going to, it's not that they're going to go quiet necessarily. It's that the media is going to stop paying attention to them. And again, and, and the only yeah, reason they're yeah. doing it now is because there's actually polling and they can't continue to ignore them. There's a media blackout on, on the PPC and God knows who else. And, <laughs> you know? and, and I think, I think what we can do on the other side of this is really start to give people hope this message was resonating is that we have a chance to make a difference in provincial politics and we can start to be that we can start to be that freedom voice for bc but we can be a bit bit more principled and more valued and and our you know our constitution is pretty tight um just back to the donations the thing i like to say um when i talk is to explain to people about the tax credit nobody likes to talk about tax credits but if you donate $100, you get $75 of the money the government stole from you back. We oh, get a, as a party, we, a we get a hundred. Get that, what it is. But when, when you say yeah, you get a tax credit, that $75 that Keith's talking about gets taken off the taxes you owe. 
So if you don't owe any taxes, they'll send you a check. No, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you do yeah. get it back. It's a non, yeah, it's a non-refundable tax credit. And, and, but, but yeah, yeah, like if we, if we learn how to present ourselves that way, where it's like, Hey, the party gets a hundred bucks, you get $75 of tax that was stolen from you back. And it only really costs you 25 bucks. Yeah. And um, exactly. yeah, we, like, we, you know, we're frugal with the money, but we need money like to, to get our message out there. We and need money. What we are frugal uh, Alex said like, this, we are this, frugal. We did not well, what Alex, Alex said at the start about like how did the PPC become very relevant? What it what it does was they had money and they had people that were able to organize. And if we don't have that, then all of us that that are able to um, be candidates and all that doesn't matter. So I hate asking for money. We all do, but right, it's an awkward. Know, uh, it's it. awkward. It's almost more awkward when people offer you money. And you didn't even ask. You're like, what do I do? With yeah, this? that's never happened to me. Like once, that's maybe. I like mean, three times like really? in, in campaigns. I'm like, well, you're offering me money. One of them was somebody on this call. Uh, but the point is, is that, yeah, in, in a political campaign, like I'm so used to like every dollar is mine. So I know exactly how to spend it. <laughs> yeah. So suddenly like, wow, I have other people's money to spend what do i do i'm gonna invest it in bitcoin and <laughs> no, no, we're, we're, <laughs> right right this is jokes jokes so anyway what do you say what do you say a humble yeah. <laughs> or, 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 no, we're this, humble but, libertarians are humble, like yeah we're pulling humble. this back to federal boys and girl and everyone listening uh so the leader of the libertarian party of canada has almost 700 votes last place in his riding way behind the ppc who has 3000 ish the liberal candidate has 22000 so right where we think a liberal libertarian party canada candidate would be would be right where he is however max bernier who we expected to be at least in contention for his seat has less than half and almost a third but he's being beat two and a half times by the conservative party candidate richard lahu who i assume is the incumbent i don't yeah. know that. uh he is beating the block mm -hmm. candidate and wow the ndb candidate nowhere to be found and the liberals are behind it but wow uh, so th th those are the leaders of the Liberty Movement. The block Bullock Go. is at 603 votes. Oh, good for Golock. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, that's awesome. Six, and Karen, six, Karen six, with the PPC got 996. Good for her. So, so between two Libertarians on that, they got 1,500 votes in Vancouver East. We yeah, are. and sometimes we'll get people arguing that we're splitting the freedom vote, and I don't think that splitting the freedom vote is actually possible either. I think if we have more candidates speaking freedom on some of these debates, it actually makes more of a difference than some of the votes. Exactly. But if you want to talk about vote splitting, yeah. so my my riding, uh, the NDP candidate's currently at 40%, and the Conservative candidate who says she's more libertarian than me is uh, maybe. <laughs> That's funny. Probably. Uh, she's at 36% and the PPC is at 7%. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Go look at 624, Karen over 1,000. I'm going to say this right now. I've never been over 1,000 except for when I was one of three. The automatic reaction in the media yeah, is going to be. I certainly have numbers Karen. like that. Good for her. But she's for a sure. very articulate lady. Right. right. Yeah. I don't agree with everything she says. Me neither. That's, That's also awesome. why I'm not a PPC supporter. Or I'm going to make a bold prediction. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. My bold prediction is Golok gets the most votes out of every Libertarian candidate. You know what? It's looking like it. Because Jacques Boudreau is 699 and he's in Ontario. Huh. And Golok's at 624 out here on the West Coast. My my prediction is Golok will be the highest vote to getter for the Federal Libertarian Party. And that and and this is in a Jenny Kwan riding, which is a shoe in. Yeah, Usually a shoe in riding gets low turnout. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So do you, wow. do you think this is an indication of higher turnout? Usually. With Golok getting. Usually 
No, usually a shoe in riding, like where you know who's going to win, gets low turnout. And and Jenny Kwan has basically owned the seat for so long. Uh, but Golok has also contested this for quite some time. And I don't know what his personal best is, but this has to be up there. Oh, this has to be up there. Because yeah. I've never beat this number, like provincial or federal. I've never beat what Golok has right now. Yet, Alex. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. I appreciate the. Uh, no, I'm, I'm vote impressed. Of I am impressed. Provincial, no. uh, next provincial election, you're gonna, you're gonna. But here, yeah. Gonna be... Thank you. But uh, honestly, it, it is. I, I tried to help Golok out one day, and uh, our, our schedules didn't jive. But uh, the reality is, is that that man, even with that limp that he has, he was out pounding the pavement. Doing what a candidate has to do. No, he'll show up. You got to give the man credit. And he I will said stand it. up and stand out. This and, guy will and, do it. And and in in danger of him hearing us talking awesome about him, <laughs> I will say that he's he's a bit odd. He stands out. He's a bit of a different character. Yeah. But he has been consistent as a Liberty performer. Yeah, he has. And no one can take that from him. And He's getting some results, so I, I, I'm excited I, to see that. Even though it's a it's a stunning defeat that he's only beating the communist by <laughs> twofold, but that in fact that you're like Andrew and uh, he said like these are big numbers. Yeah, he oh, just I, I appreciate the luck, and I appreciate that he he didn't just you know he challenged me when I became leader, and, yeah, and we had some he disagreements. And he didn't trust, he didn't trust me, which is great. But uh, I think we're okay now. But he hit two percent. He just hit two percent of the overall vote for a libertarian. Federally, that's a big deal. Federally, and he's got oh, he's got that. PPC and a communist to run against. <laughs> Jody Craven did a eight point two percent. Oh, good oh, for nice. Jody. Thank good you for Jody. checking, Sandra. Yeah. That's a win. That is a win. That's I mean, nice. it's not a win, but it's no, good. it's not a win. It's, it's, it's only eight <laughs> percent, but I'm it's idiot. good. <laughs> I'm the idiot who said it's a win. It's not a win, but it's really good. Yeah, no, that is good. Oh man, that's in Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Yep. Thank you for yeah. the clarification. Yeah, a lot of our our best ridings are north. I know. Uh, we we've thought about parachuting people in places, and it's just never never really made sense uh like what what's the point if uh someone's not comfortable with that community like you you, 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 you try and think sucks. about where people are comfortable with that liberty message you want to put your best voice but also if someone i don't think it has to be there, someone from there i mean maybe it okay. no okay. i don't think so but it depends how far away we're talking and trying parachuting from like really far away where you're, you're talking different or just the next riding over what are we really talking about yeah, here you're right that's a good point and i know I'm i taught... didn't want to run in my own riding oh and the no i didn't in the last provincial election I did so not. was that quadra it, oh it was, sorry it was yeah it was, it was what do you call in it vancouver um but I, I ran in fairview where i don't live because i thought we'd do better there ah uh, so. so i just randomly picked uh a riding in alberta battle river and crowfoot their turnout was 31 percent gotta be better than that that's not finished. That final turnout or just the turnout of the votes that have been counted so far? it says it says voters so they're they're over half of their polls with eighty-one thousand voters are scheduled voters the turnout had only twenty-five thousand votes Oh, I don't know about these numbers because I'm looking at a different wow. number on the government website. It's 40, 40. One writing, it's giving me funky numbers that I don't agree with. You don't agree. Oh, I, I thought I thought the turnout would work against the liberals a bit because from what I've been oh, hearing, yes, the hardcore yes. liberals are so done with Trudeau that um, like they had a hard time even getting candidates. So Calgary, Calgary Heritage has their turnout at 62.6%. Hmm. Hmm. that final and that's what that's what it's at right now 100 percent uh no. it's one poll remaining oh that's 100 percent then yeah, yeah. wow so 62 percent wow. wow so yeah but federally we're like um 
Yeah, for 40.53 percent of no. registered elections. Yeah, 40%. With that, like half of BC still to go. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll bring see. up the 80 percent voters right now, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. If, if everyone voted in BC, <laughs> I have a, I have a, a comment. Uh, somebody, uh, Norbert from Liberty.com, he texted me and he said someone reached out to them. And they were a uh, permanent resident, and they received a voting card. Ooh. And oh, he, I wonder and he was how asking, often that happens. Well, yeah, how often is it happening? And I, I said, like, I don't really know. Maybe go try and vote and see what happens. And if you are allowed to vote, then this is maybe something. Yeah, we need something to interesting. Up that's happening, they and they're trying. To and I, I don't necessarily days. think that permanent residents shouldn't be allowed to vote but if they're not allowed to vote and they are voting then then we've got a bit of a problem so Keith, I, such, a, such a that is a very well libertarian position libertarian <laughs> position it's i don't think that they shouldn't be allowed to vote but also if that's the rule that's the rule Agreed. like like i'm like 100 percent boom fucking libertarians <laughs> fucking so libertarian. hard to be us so hard to be you're, you're absolutely right so no i i showed up to vote and had had it not been for the goof in front of me who didn't have picture id i would have been out of there in like four minutes <laughs> but he had like a piece oh. of paper like temporary driver's license I'm like buddy this you're not new to this and i've i've heard stories of multiple people that have lived in the same residence for uh in some cases two decades and they didn't get their voter card uh oh. Tim McCann, one of our candidates, if you look on his Facebook, he uh, spent two and a half hours getting the runaround just to try to vote. What? So he wasn't uh, on the said, register? Well, <laughs> turns out he was on the registry. They just didn't find his name. So he registered at the one place, then he got sent to the other polling place because it wasn't his writing. And then they said, no, you can't vote here. And then they sent him back to the other place. And, and it, it was an entire runaround for two and a half hours. And then he's like, hey, my name is actually on the list right there. You just didn't see it. And it's in interesting. Um, I got my voting card. Um, I know, yeah, uh, someone else that lives here got a voting card and hasn't lived here very long uh, based on the tax return. But I have, I've, I have heard more than more people than I would have heard before that didn't get their voting card, whether it's intentional or incompetence. This is where I always come back with government, pandemic included. It's either intentional or incompetence. It's often incompetence, but it's just it's just a little bit weird. So I got I just checked my riding to see what the percentage of voter turnout was. So they're over 50% of polls, and we are at 24.7%. Sorry, how much? Twenty four point seven percent. So the that's, that's goes back to Alex's point about it was guaranteed to go to to Stroll, right? Yeah. Everybody who's everybody knows that Ch uh, Mark Stroll was going to win this so we're gonna win. this Sorry, seat, Chuck, so no Chuck nobody Stroll. showed up. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And it's funny, and I see different numbers on the few pages or writings that I'm following. So I want to take this brief moment of silence to interject. Always good in a podcast, but okay. Be beautiful. <laughs> My own personal local uh, writings. So I'm a Langley resident, live in the township of Langley. I would have run in the Langley Alder Grove riding. And the PPC candidate, as terrible as she was, as I've talked to Sandra on the phone and, and said it about. Uh, and was she a parachute or she, was she a local? She was from Cook. Coquitlam or Poco. Okay. She has beat the Green Party candidate, which is it's something. Well, it's great. So I'm like, oh and it's the national. I like norm. I actually like the Green Party candidate as a person. Yeah. Obviously, I could never vote for her. Right. Ever. And I think that she's, you know, misinformed for thinking that that's the best vehicle to, to battle things like environmental damage. Yeah. But uh well, that's what branding comes in. Oh gosh, that's yes. it. People buy into yeah, the branding. The they don't want to scratch the surface. Has not quite, but almost doubled the Green Party candidate in my home writing. Oh. So I can only imagine I would have been at about six votes. Me, my wife, <laughs> and maybe a few people I know at work. Maybe. 
And then uh, the other Langley riding, the PPC candidate from based on what I read look in the, the newspaper and I saw signs up, he's run twice now. So he ran 2019, Ian, uh, Ian Kennedy. Again, he, he did a great campaign, 1300 votes. That's amazing. Still distant fourth of four candidates. Yeah. Distant fourth of four. Distant. It's like he did everything right and still nothing to show for it. Yeah. Whereas the other candidate in my riding did nothing right and beat somebody. You got more total wonder. votes. Yeah. More total votes. Me, so in that riding, though, it's actually a difference maker. So we're talking about federal election results. That riding turned conservative 2019. Um, uh, Tamara Jansen, she's, uh, her family owns a local greenhouse company, but she was very notorious for her anti, um, the conversion therapy, which a lot of libertarians are like, we're not touching that. Yeah. And not because we're for it no, but or against it, but it's like, it, we're not touching it. Yeah. But the flip side, she was also her and the other Langley candidate were against the, uh, were uh, proponents of the legislation to stop assisted suicide. And I'm like, no, if you can't no. own your own life, yeah, and your you, own body, you, yeah. what do you own? What do you own? If you can't own your own body, what do you own? So she, and that's when I lost the CPC vote once and for all yeah. is when her and the local, my local candidate came out against that. So she is losing to the guy she beat last time. Yeah. So the guy who she beat last time is now ahead by a considerable amount. So that's a liberal win. So you think about all the liberal seats they've lost, and I'm sure there've been plenty back East because back East is a shit show, especially in the Atlantic provinces. They just gained one on the West coast. Yeah gained one that blows my mind what do you think the turnout is with 50 polls left in vancouver east so this is golox and karen's what did it say yeah i don't know 38 uh, percent I, I had it i had it up because i'm curious I, 30, 30, oh, I wonder i wonder no. about the turnout the turnout oh, though is, so is something to consider mm -hmm. is um I know in the provincial election, they didn't count the advance voting until they counted the mail-in ballots. And I wonder if there could be a little bit of skewing happening with uh, yeah. overly afraid who voted early and voted mail-in. No, uh, I think the mail-in number. Keith, you're probably right. I know uh, with the, uh, the, the by-election I ran in for school trustee, the, all the mail-in ballots are counted a week later. So I'm sure even if, like, of course, this is a much bigger scale that expecting everything to be on the same time frame would be a lot to ask. Yeah, I think if different. I doubt you're right. Yeah, I think different writings are going to be different. I think there, it will be interesting to watch the turnout. But I know like in, in the provincial election, it was the advance polls and the early all got voted, counted two weeks later. Uh -huh. I know federally they've decided to allow ballots to be received two or three days after election day, which I actually agree with. I was kind of annoyed with NBC that yeah. it should be yeah. the postmark date, right? Like your tax return yeah. is your postmark date. Like you should be able to take your time to vote until the last yes. possible uh, minute. Um, maybe don't count any of the ballots until two weeks later. Maybe we could just all, all relax. But, for two weeks. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, like be interesting. Liberty is going to be the winner, maybe for two weeks. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> we got we got like fifteen minutes left before I think we should call it a night. But like, does anybody have any like big points that haven't come up they want to bring up? Because otherwise, I'm just going to talk over everyone. But like, I'm sure there's someone of Keith, Andrew, Sandra that has something more interesting to say than me just rambling on about how poor the Libertarian Party of Canada has done. I think I'd like to talk about how much I hate the other parties and why. I would like, I think five <laughs> minutes of that is, is totally- So wrong. I got a, I got a question. There's five minutes of Sandra. <laughs> how, how many, how many of the party leaders survive? I got, I got Andrew. Oh, that's actually a great bet. That's Andrew a great for bet. three minutes. That's a great party bet. Party leaders, Sandra's first and Sandra for other parties. Keith, what do you got? 
Um, I'm going to tell you which riding I think we're actually we have a great chance of winning in the provincial oh, fuck, election. That's great. That's and awesome. Fuck, we're going to build the momentum. That's four minutes. Four minutes. Key. We don't have to go to the last BC. second, and we can go over. It's us. Well, the rest of it's going to be hearing them sipping on my can. <laughs> I'm All right, if Sandra, tell me about the other because we talked a lot about the, the Libertarian Party of Canada, how even though they're probably the most principled party, yeah, totally irrelevant because what do we have? A dozen candidates, uh Jared Pilon or Pylon. I yeah. what's the pronunciation, Keith? You know? I don't know. I'm but Pion, regardless, he's an Alberta candidate. Yeah. An Alberta boy in his riding got embarrassed, less than 200 votes. Yeah. Maybe he might hit 300 at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, that's embarrassing. But that's embarrassing because he was the best that our party put forward. So, I mean, we really have to, and to ask ourselves, how does this keep happening? How does and this keep happening? Why does this keep happening? Is and it then, a matter of money? Is it a matter of branding? Is it a matter of advertising? And, right. so, or, and I think, I think a lot of people are, aren't sure what a libertarian is. I think a lot of people, we say that, you know, I, I talk to people all the time. Oh, what do you, oh, I'm involved in politics and, oh, which party? You know, I say PBC or libertarian and talk about some of the policies. And for the first question is, oh, what's a libertarian? And, and you tell them the policies. Oh, well, that sounds, that good. sounds good. But where are the votes, man? I mean, do, I, do people just not understand? I think when people hear libertarian, maybe they don't picture us. I, I have to say, and I'll say this to everyone out here, before I joined this party, I don't think I've ever met such a group of well-read individuals in, in, in talking about history and economics and, and politics, obviously, and, and principal group. I, and, and I just don't understand what else can we do? And then we know what's missing. Like, what's the difference between us and them? Yes, we're better, but why doesn't anyone know that? I have to right. say it's, it's probably money or branding, advertising. We're not new. And we're not new. Our concepts aren't new. I mean, all the Austrians are old, and you know, we're talking about finance and uh, and and economics. So I, I don't know. I think we just need to to really just keep pushing forward. And and I don't remember who I was talking to about this. And another politician will just say, and and they were saying it's it's also you could you could probably also do some damage in joining by joining a party that has principles that you kind of like that you live with and then you can push from inside but i'm not sure as a newcomer to any party that's actually true i'm fascinated by the ppc because how far they've come in so little now mm -hmm. is this because maxime bernier was a very popular conservative before he lost by a hair and we're not even sure about that i mean and he probably got screwed i mean they were really not oh, very yeah. Eh, it's politics, I yeah. guess. I mean, that's how they are. But margin, I mean, margin of fraud. Yeah, <laughs> margin of fraud. And then we'll quickly burn the ballots. Right. <laughs> so, which they did. They destroyed yeah. the ballots, which yeah. is illegal. And how they got away with that, I just, I'll never know. But I'm interested. This he fascinates me because how far they've come in so much less time than us. They didn't have a lot of money either. Mom, probably more money than more, us, but not provincially. That much more. Not that much more. Yeah, more. Maybe it's because he was already a name. But you want you didn't want to talk about Max or our party. You want to talk about other parties. Yeah, I do want to. Let's let's criticize the other parties. Well, they're big liars. Okay, so <laughs> which we know that I think um, the NDP Jagmeet Singh is talking about it. People's biggest concern is is housing how are my kids gonna afford a house i can't i know i can't afford a house well i think about two-thirds of canadians own okay they might have mortgages up to their eyeballs but they are owners so they they want to they he wants to start taxing that and so create housing programs for younger people and stuff so people who have worked their butts off and paid down their mortgages and stuff are just I guess we're dumb you know, for doing that. He's actually going to do the reverse thing in, in making housing easier, unless they're willing to remove the barriers. And I'm probably speaking of the converted out here. First of all, the feds, what they can do is eliminate, um, is eliminate any redundancy building codes, et cetera, that have in the, in the, in the provinces. Um, and and remove some of the taxation frankly i mean just yeah. to buy a house you have to pay the transfer tax and oh. 
or, or you know a crappy apartment we're not even talking about a fabulous house here no. i mean you, they just remove some of that tax they, that'll just be money right off the bottom that people don't have to come up with no one wants to live with their parents till they're 40 which brings me to the liberals so once you have decided to live with your parents till you're 40 because you can't afford it <laughs> then your parents need and want to downsize when they do that the Mr. Trudeau, though, denied it. It's not true. It is in his little manifesto. They do want to put put um, capital gains tax on your on yeah. the, the difference on on mom and dad's house. So they're not going to have a comfortable old age one. And if they do have enough, if there is enough left over for them, you're not getting it either. So you can't buy your house or your apartment. And and because Mr. Mr. Trudeau is going to get the money because he's helping. They're just plainly lying to these people and they're going to make the problems that they're pretending to solve worse and they're going to blame it on someone else greedy landlords or the cities and municipalities which are also largely to blame but that's another conversation that'll be for in the next podcast oh, <laughs> yes yes we're going to jack everybody language, girl. but those things are just are just horrible those things that that are actually preventing people from owning and yeah. back to our conversation about what we were talking about with the first nations keith that if you you got to get that foothold in so you can leverage it and go further and be able to start that business or or start saving or max that RSP if you don't have that extra money because it's going to Mr. Trudeau or Mr. Yeah. Singh or whatever you're doing yeah. you're not going to get ahead and guess what neither are your kids I that's that's really my take and the greens they don't even count now but they're not green they're red they're not helping the environment you want to help the environment and poverty and poverty in other countries export that that can that Canadian natural gas so people don't have to burn coal and trees in other countries. The Can't. term the Kuznets curve. Have you heard that? Yes. Do you think any Green Party candidates have heard that? No. That's part of the problem. No. The, the, yeah. The, and they yeah. say, and you know what? No matter what Canada does federally, if we stop driving, if we stopped exhaling, we are not going to move the needle move on the climate needle. change. And, 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 and you know what, these, these guys that make these rules and these taxes, they know that if little old me knows that they know that. But Sandra, so real quick, you, you, you shit on the NDP and the liberals shit on the conservatives real hard for like 30 seconds. It won't take 30 seconds. They're not even conservative. They're not conservative right. at all. Not, not fiscally. And, and, and I'm grateful that they're not, you know, conservative socially anymore, but they're not conservative <laughs> right. at all. And, and they're, they're not shrinking their government. And, and, you know, I'm not just blaming this current, even under the Harper administration, they only shrank like this much, under 1%. Mm -hmm. So are you really conservative? Who are you playing? Now this incarnation of the conservatives, are, they're, they're lefter than left. They're, they're just, they're just the, the Trudeau in, in another right color. Trudeau. Right of Trudeau. That's all it is. Then are they though? Oh. Are they though? I don't really like Oh, I'm not uh, saying it. I think we're out of time. <laughs> I'm not oh, seeing seriously. it. Seriously. Yeah, Good I'm point. not seeing it. All right. So we got uh, Keith. Keith, what do you got? What do you got this? Oh, no. Andrew first. Andrew, what do you got? Well, my thing was how many party leaders survive. So I'm just looking at um, this, the splits here. So in the last election, Trudeau got 33% of the vote for 153 seats. This election, he got 31% of the vote for 156 seats. He's lost 3% of, of the vote. Does that cost him his, his job? He's slowly losing more and more percent. And then- I think look, his job is costed because, because he didn't uh, get a majority. And then you look at the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party did 0.3% worse. So very rarely, exact same amount of seats that they got under Sheer, O'Toole got at 121. It was they... hard for them to find someone with less personality than Sheer, but they succeeded. Wow. <laughs> Do they, so does- Truer words. I've never I've never with Harper. Like, <laughs> I mean, like the the with Harper. Yeah, lack of personality. They yeah, got no matter. they got no one that can win. Well, yeah. They do. They do. The the guy well, that I think can win for the conservative party is Pierre Polyev. 
I like Paul. Yeah, yeah. he says all the right things. I mean, who knows? At least he understands. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't hate him. And then, so the New Democrats have 27 seats, 17 percent of the vote this time. Last time they got 24 seats and 16 percent of the vote. Wow, good. So So, slight increase. Yeah. So does that keep? Does does that give Jagmeet another another run? Yeah. Yeah, it'll give Jag. He's not controversial. No. There aren't people rising against him like there are in the liberals. And yeah. Well, as yeah, I'm just gonna say next, right now, I'm not gonna do should, TikTok. He speaks their language. Next is is the Green Party. Last election, they got six point six percent of the vote. Now you want to see a collapse? This is a collapse. This. Um, election they're at 2.2 yeah the green same party. amount of seats same amount of seats yeah, but 2.2 percent of the vote they ate themselves from the inside well, we just put ourselves in, in their shoes to yeah guys yeah, sorry we're mumbling we're mumbling on the side here, here. <laughs> but sandra and i are like what would it take to, to feel actually bad feel green bad because we're saying we almost feel bad for them <laughs> and, and, and it's to put ourselves in their shoes like wow yeah, we, the Libertarian Party of Canada, uh, about what was the fifth 2015 prior to that was 2011. Yeah, we had 90 candidates. Yeah, that's a third of the candidates. That's kind of like BC Libertarian, right? Party and you know, and, we were we were making it, and you see, and then what, we like, went to 30 and and 10. And so, we know we know that that he's not going to lose his his seat, but or his his position but last is last uh max he went from 1.6 in his in the first election with the ppc to 5.2 yeah Yeah, you can't lose position when there's no way to replace the leader (laughs) that's that's true that's actually a lot of people are very unhappy about that yes that you're not he, a real he party. lost a lot of he lost a lot of votes in Alberta because he's from Quebec. Really? Yeah. Sure. It, it, yeah. Absolutely. Sure. People don't people in Alberta you know, don't like, trust. Out here too, people. I don't. I'm not going to vote for someone from Quebec. I've heard that. Well, out, out, See, but, but if you look if you look at the results and yeah, how many, it. it's bigoted, man. <laughs> but you you look at the results and how many guys from uh, how many places PPC came in second in Alberta. Mm. It, it was more than one or two ridings that they came in second. Second? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight? Like they, their stronghold is the prairies. Yeah. And ima- imagine if they replaced their leader with someone that would resonate in the West. But I think that, I don't think that it, it I don't think Max is the problem. Uh-huh. I, well, I, I think, yeah, just from my redneck relatives in Alberta, <laughs> I think he, he did lose some votes because of that. And, I think and he then, gained gained some votes, but yeah, he gained um, some votes because who he is, and he and he's and he was a strong candidate. But and my my lot my uh, final one is the Maverick Party only ran candidates in areas that the Conservative Party had super majorities. Why? Yeah, why? Their their feeling was they they want they don't like Trudeau. They wanted Trudeau out, and they didn't want to be the oh. reason. So they they wanted to send a message to the conservatives to be like, hey, we can take some of your votes, but we're not going to take enough votes to cost you the seat. Gross. Yeah, that's too convoluted. Even, even more gross than Sorry. I want to beat you, and I'm not good enough to beat you. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> So, so okay, Keith. Uh, out of all those, uh, sorry, sorry, but I'm out of all those sorry. leaders, how many survive? Do all of them survive? Does only two of them survive? Wow, my God! I actually my gut says don't have everyone. a lot of hope for 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 Trudeau. Really? Yeah. I don't. But on the other hand, he's a brand in himself, so maybe a lot of liberals don't. Do, like do you guys who who thinks that O'Toole makes it to the to another one? I hope he does. I do. I think he will because they're reluctant to change leaders again so fast. Gross. Yeah, I think they'll be reluctant to change leaders again. Who else I think that's, will that's it exactly be? why. Who else would it be? 
Jagmeet will stay. Max will stay. Trudeau will be gone. Obviously, really? Paul. You don't think gone. Trudeau will be gone? I think he's staying. No, there's no way he's the brand, staying. But he didn't do his job for them. He, he, he didn't did not he do did deliver. He did, he did not, not deliver. I, they took a chance on him. You're right. With there's the discourse. There's discourse in that party. I think his time is very, very short. So I, we're, uh, but we're just, I'm going. Trudeau stays. Yeah. O'Toole's gone. You think so, eh? Okay. I think O'Toole's gone. I think Jagmeet's staying. That Anna Paul for the Greens is done. She's gone. Marie She's Paul. Done. Oh, sure. yeah. Anna Marie Paul. <laughs> Anime, Anime Paul. Anime, Anime Paul. She's done. And then, and then obviously Max stays because there's really nobody to challenge him. What about the block leader? You didn't mention him. He's oh, gonna he's stay. Good. He he got him. The, he got him the same amount of seats, right? So, yeah. Um, I I think that he's he's gonna stay. So, I I think that the only one that I have a fear, or only two are the cons and the greens. I think are the ones that are going to uh, replace their leaders. That's just how I see it going. All right, we'll yeah. see who's right in your, I think your Andrew. Could go either Boy, way. Okay. He didn't do his job. Though. You're right, but he's staying. But you're right, he failed. Okay, Keith, you, I'm going to give you the basically last word. You said how this election gives you moment or feeling of momentum for our provincial party on how we're going to do going forward. Go, go, talk over me. Do yeah, it. I, yeah. I, you know, and keep in mind, I'm an eternal optimist, but uh, yeah. I think I think the state of politics in BC is a lot different than the state of uh, federal politics. And I, I never fully answered uh, the question on uh, ridings that we can win. And I, I fully agree the Northern ridings. Uh, I agree I'm probably not going to win in Penticton. I might not even be living in Penticton and uh, by the next election, my youngest son will be graduating. Uh, I could be r- running in a different riding. Uh, but I think Merritt is a riding that we have a really strong chance in. It's a very rural riding, um, lots of small towns. It's a very big riding. It's also next door to Penticton where I can spend some time in and, and help. And I agree with not as a leader spending too much time in other ridings, especially comedy as Vancouver. But I do think that uh, just judging by the feedback uh, from the Freedom Rally in Kelowna, doing some talks at the Vancouver Freedom Rally and the Victoria Freedom Rally uh, would be quite good. Um, you know, I feel like my timing came back a little bit and we got a little bit of excitement there. Uh, but I, I think there's going to be a really huge hole after this federal election for freedom. And people are craving it. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, I kind of look at it as a funnel, right? Like, if you look at people as a funnel, like 90% of the people were like just kind of going about their business and nothing was really going on. And the five to 10% of us were like, man, the government hurts us and we hate it and we want to make a change. But I think something happened in the last year and a half and people have actually realized that the government hurts them. They felt it. We know that government's been hurting them for a very, very long time, but they've actually felt it this time. And I think I think now we can help people see that there is an alternative to the government hurting you all the time. And the government took away families, they took away businesses, they took away the livelihoods, they took away, um, like now I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna consciously share my vaccination status here. I'm now a dirty subhuman. I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed to go to events. I have some amazing events coming up that, that I can't, I can go to. I've had people reach out to me and they say, Hey, we can't, we don't, we feel like second class citizens here. And the only reason for doing that is because of a medical choice. And that's, and that's really wrong. And if, I think if we can kind of show people, this is what the government does in all areas all the time, whether it's the fires, whether it's the, uh, um, the lack of response in the heat wave, at the end of June, they don't have our best interest in mind. The only people that have our best interest in mind is ourselves and our community, and we can do better. And I, I think we can win a seat. I think we can have momentum. It's, it's hard. 
and to what Sanders said, um, you know, why didn't the Libertarian Party get where the PPC Party uh, went to? And, and realistically, it is because we don't have we don't have the people that are needed to do that. We have amazing, smart, educated people. We know how we. <laughs> Like this is the smartest group of people uh, for government policy that I've ever been involved with. Unfortunately, what we don't have is people that can promote us. And I, I look back to it uh, when I was younger, I wasn't very lucky with the ladies. And uh, I was like, I'm very smart. I'm very interesting, um, but I wasn't a very good marketer. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I do okay now, it's fine. But, but it, it is, it is, it is this, what the Libertarian Party is, is we are, we are this very intelligent, very smart group of people, but we don't know how to promote ourselves and we're very humble and that's a great thing, uh, but we have to, have to find people that are willing to promote us for us and we need to find people that are going to get our signatures for us. Uh, I don't want us to get to that point of the kind of Trumpism that happens with the PPC party where it's all about the, the, the leader and people get whipped into a frenzy. There's some kind of a balance in there, but I think we can absolutely uh, become relevant in the BC politics and is a, in a real state of disarray. And I've only lived here 11 years, but the liberal party is a, in a mess. They have no identity their liber their leader is who knows who the next leader is going to be but that party is completely fractured which makes it easy for horgan to continue to win i don't think he's long for this world of politics either and <clears throat> yeah you know i think i think we can be that voice but i'm the eternal optimist anyway i like that you're optimistic. Yeah. that's what we need so, Alex, what, what riding is the Libertarian leader in? Uh, he is in London West, I believe. He, I can bring you up. Yeah, London West, Jacques Boudreau. It's a very poor showing for him, which, whatever, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's uh, Jacques, well, you know, he's almost at 800 votes. That's better than I've ever done. Gold locks at 772. All right, go Golock on. is kicking ass. Jacques Boudreau is at 798, which is not great, but it's at 98% reporting. I, I, met, I, met, I met Jacques, and I, I like him. He's a very smart guy on the financial oh, side. I didn't vote for him, but I was glad he won somehow. Like, the person yeah. I voted for, I was like, I think that person should get votes. But I'm glad Jacques won. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just being there at the convention was different. Uh, oh yeah, well you were in there in oh, you were in Edmonton, right? Yeah, you were. Yeah, well, I, I noticed you didn't say my speech was inspiring, but uh, uh, no, it wasn't because I've heard it four times before, Keith. Because you've spoken to our party about the same thing, and now you have to tell the rest of the province the same thing. So yeah. stop telling me and Sandra. And tell the rest of the province all of that, please. I'm, Thanks. I'm working on it. But no, I, I like <laughs> the fact that Doc has the time. He's retired. He said he actually, he told his wife after the last election, he'd never run an ever. Oh another. my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. And, and uh, now he's leader of the party. Um, and so I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, I hope that they get some structure. Uh, yes. to their party and they they asked me they're like hey well like how how come B, bc isn't helping us i'm like well <laughs> you just say i want your help that's not enough like and this is something that we we want to do going to the next election is we want candidates to be prepared we want everybody to have an expectation of what what it means to be a candidate and build a team yeah. and yeah. let's take down horgan let's take that take guy down or it's not even about taking down Horgan. It's about making Horgan realize we're there. That's, I think. He kind of lost that sense of accountability he for really, sure. He really did. I think, I think when it comes down to it, we took a small bit of pride when the BC liberals assumed our NICBC platform. Yeah. So can we please just make the entire BC liberal platform ours? <laughs> and then we can go harder core libertarian because that's what happened with the federal lpoc they're like oh look 
the PPC's 15% flat tax. So now we can go no income tax. <laughs> Well, the, the thing is, we have stuff in our platform that no other party can touch. And I, I, and I think a key thing is, is that none of us want power. No, none, yeah. of, us, none of us want it. And, and if we get in of course, there, it's that old joke. I, we we want to take over the world and leave it alone. It, <laughs> yeah. It's really true. It's so true. I don't want to tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> no way. other party. Vote can, for me. <laughs> no other party can touch that like that uh, i know it's like what are you gonna do for me nothing <laughs> okay everyone um yeah we gotta wrap it we up we're over time people listening still i am just wow. assuming a number but like please everyone thank you for coming out this was andrew's idea i agreed Nine. to it immediately Eight. which didn't happen uh sandra if she didn't agree to it it wouldn't have happened if keith didn't agree to be on the other side of this it wouldn't have happened and Don, who's not here, and no one tell Don that we said nice things about him. No, no, no. But but like out. he helped us with troubleshooting and his like third. Yeah, edge in this I'm so, glad he was here. He's was always so got such good. great input. It was so yeah. good. So everyone who participated, thank you very much. Everyone who listened, you guys are the cream of the crop. And obviously, whoever you voted for should have won the election. If you didn't vote that's why you didn't vote because yeah. there's no one there's no one good there's enough no one, no one good for. enough for you yeah and uh mm-hmm. thank you very much for being supporters of the bc libertarian party the ppc the libertarian party of canada and just independence and, everywhere yeah, liberty in general independence thank you. independence everywhere thank you because thank from you. liberty comes all good things true story yeah all right. Thank you. Yeah, we don't now want please. we don't want to be a political party if we didn't have to be a political party. Yes. So we got uh, we had nine nine people online at this. So that's that's amazing. You guys rock. Good night. Good night, everyone. Let's shut this down.